All right. We might crack this open. Okay. Otherwise, I'll do that live on air and it will go everywhere. <laughs> cheers, right? Cheers. <laughs> Sorry. Should have cheers it. Oh, it's delicious. I love lemon lime. It's like a little bit bitter, but not too bitter. Oh, but like lemon lime is my jam. Yeah. It's oh, of all the flavours. Yeah, so normally I'll go for... That one's my go-to if you ever feel something kind of lemon and limey. And if I want something sweet, it's yeah. this one. This one well, it's hilarious. I had that one the very first time. I hate passion fruit. Like, yeah. mum loves growing passion fruit vines. I just don't like it. Yeah. That was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of all the it's, things. It's kind of weird, right? It's, it's like a more natural tasting passiona. So yeah. if you like passiona but you want something that's nicer, that's it's true. kind of like that. Without the crunchy seeds of passion fruit. I think yeah. that's what throws me off passion fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the yeah. Crunchy. Like, it's sloppy, but it's crunchy. Yeah, I need one or the two. When you have it like with um, yogurts and stuff, it always just ends up being a bit of a weird experience. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Heston Russell Voice of a Veteran podcast. And today I have an exciting guest, Mark Curry, Mr. Mark Curry, who Sam and I actually came across um, in the development of veteran games and reaching out to sponsors. Very good friends of ours, Emma and Kyle, own... Um, the fitness studio therapy down the road here in the Gold Coast and they actually stock these drinks called Savvy that I have right here in front of me. I have the lemon lime and Mark has the passion fruit and Mark is the inventor of Savvy. Mark, welcome. Thank you so much, Heston. So happy I, to be here. Yeah, very <laughs> happy to have you here. I mean, so we, yeah, we reached out to you and had a great um, Zoom conversation where you, yeah, I you, took up a big chunk of your It was day. so good because <laughs> we have so many of these sponsorship conversations and it's been fascinating for Sam and I reaching out to all these big businesses. Like I told you, we've had a couple of really big energy drink businesses come on board, but all they care about are the commercials and getting their product and how much exposure they can get. And then we had a conversation with you at the re- recommendation of um, Emma and Kyle. And you're also local. You live on Bar- in Byron, yeah? Yeah, yeah, just like half an hour down the road. Oh, 45 minutes probably. Yeah, I love it. And um, you started telling us the whole background to Savvy and your background experience. And I was like, straight away, there is brand alignment, there are values alignment, and there's this whole health and wellness piece that we need in the veteran community to get all of our dopamine and endorphin munching machines off, you know, those quick, um, what's it called, quick stimulants and into some more sustainable holistic health. So, Mark, my start, please, let's, let's go back to that conversation. Tell me about Savvy and where it came from and where you came from to get there. Okay, so a bit of a longish story. So all the way back to... It's a good story. Stay tuned. So basically, I used to work as a, a commercial lawyer and so I worked for a company that has three and a bit thousand employees across the country. I worked in the Sydney-based office of which there was about 750 employees. So you're, you're a number effectively and they're, they're very good with how they keep you there in the firm. So if you ever have any friends out there who work as lawyers, the lifestyle they have to lead is they get into the firm between 8 and 9 in the morning and then they'll usually be um, given some kind of incentive to stay late. So if you stay till 7 o'clock, you get a free dinner. And the dinner is an average dinner. It's, it's a three or four course degustation. Wow. It's way better than what I could make. So of course I'm going to stay for dinner. If I stay till 8 o'clock, I get a free cab ride home. Great. <laughs> Makes life a bit easier. Um, I love these incentives. You poke yourself in the eye, you get a prize. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Stay till nine, you get a free cab ride back the next day. So most people are, are staying at least till nine o'clock. And so you just kind of think, oh, that's fine, that's all right. And you just normalise it. But you're really just putting quite a lot of long, um, hours into the day. And that's just like a standard day. But then, of course, it can be way more challenging and way worse again. And the stress obviously gets there. If there's deadlines, you're staying until midnight or 4 a.m., just back-to-back days and so a lot of the people are having huge amounts of caffeine like in Australia the average person um, 88% of Australians have one to three caffeinated beverages every single day oh, okay Makes and sense. that's just the the standard kind of statistics uh, but I feel in in larger working environments uh, the average person was having five or ten at least I know I was having five or ten cups of coffee a day oh and they're full and cups double shots or yeah, well, just you needed to. Like, um, it was it was pretty bad. Like, you'd, you'd start out of a, always have a coffee getting up, out of a coffee going into work, and then I'd have another coffee kind of mid morning, and then I'd usually kind of send my secretary or send someone down who was doing a coffee run and grab a whole bunch of short blacks, and then it was almost every two three hours. Just you need to have a bit of a top up. Yeah. But everyone was the same thing, and then uh, then there's other 
uh, substances as well that people would start to uh, get into which weren't particularly healthy. So like prescription medications or ADHD medications oh, yep. and narcolepsy medications, and then narcolepsy all- medications. So keep them uh, awake. Yeah. Oh so wow. Like, so people who have issues with randomly falling asleep need um, quite powerful and strong stimulants to ensure they don't fall asleep. Oh. And so these are all different versions of um, amphetamines, effectively. Yeah, got it. So whether legalized or non-legalized, um, they kind of are across the scene as a, an option to stay awake. And if it's a Wednesday or Thursday and you're running on two hours, three hours of sleep each night on the Monday, Tuesday, you've limited options. Yeah. And so a lot of people are turning to these. Well, I'm kind of thinking the exact opposite approach, which is when I was younger, I played a fair bit of sport and then you get given a slightly different nutrition program to all the average, um, all the other um, people. So I got the idea in my head that you get special training and special nutrition equals taking your potential and making it potentially really, really good. Yep. So then I thought, why doesn't the same exist for the mental arena? Yeah. So physical performance, great, we've got that lock and key, perfect. Mental performance, and which encompasses mental health, why aren't we spending more time like learning about this and what's going to kind of de- um, develop this and improve it? So... I spent my nights researching into that and I came across nootropics and I've experimented with these back in in high school. My mum was always really into herbology and um, quite a a natural star mum. Not not dissimilar from yours, actually. Very, very into... Mark just just met my mum before and uh, pretty much sold her on Savvy, which is hilarious because she's the hardest consumer to win over. (laughs) Now she's going to be trying to grow this stuff in her backyard. So thank you for that. Um, but yeah, so mum was always very into uh, health-related things. And so I think that's probably where I got it in the first place. Yeah. And um, it was just trying to look into a much healthier way to get through the day. That was the whole concept. So got instead it. of having huge amounts of coffee and caffeine, I just kind of discovered nootropics, adaptogens, larger amount of particular vitamins and uh, minerals. And I started to question, why do we have the recommended dietary intakes that we have? Yeah. What well, e- we're going to have to stop you for those at home. What would you say? Nootropics. Oh, what, was, what was the other one? Nootropics and then adaptogens. So explain to us what those two things are. Great question. So uh, nootropics are a class of substance, usually natural, but there's also synthetic or unnatural variations. And they improve mental performance, which is your ability to focus and concentrate on tasks and have faster and quicker thinking speeds. Okay. Uh, also improving things like memory. So things that are just going nice. to help you perform better mentally, yep. but also they really help to improve mental health. Okay. So these are things like improving your mood, your resilience to stress and anxiety. Yeah. So things that are extraordinarily important. And what I think is really cool about these particular ingredients is they provide that perfect bridge between the two icons of performance and health. Because yeah, sometimes right. a lot of people... Uh, unfortunately focus too heavily upon performance yeah. um, and sacrifice health for Yeah, that. like short burst performance. I just need to get through this knowing that I can crash afterwards as opposed to sustained health that provides greater performance. Exactly. And that's the whole yeah, like, right. thing that I was trying to get people to, to get around. And so I was this weird guy on level six, one of the lawyers there who would spend so much time researching into this and I found it was amazing for me in university and I wanted to redo it and make it way better. So I speak to people much smarter than myself and be like, am I kind of onto something, this nootropics thing? Like, and they're like, yeah, like this, this could be amazing. Like the science is there, it's all great. And I'm like, all right, cool. And so I spent so many countless hours in, in rabbit holes learning about this stuff and I was just perplexed. Why isn't this stuff everywhere? This stuff is incredible. And then so <laughs> I started buying it on in and I was investing now hundreds and hundreds of dollars buying all this stuff in from America, um, from certain parts of Europe and Asia, some things you couldn't directly import into Australia. So I was having them freight forwarded to a place in America and then sent from America in a big bag over to Australia. So Im- Importing nootropics. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, Did they come in like black plastic bags? Well, or what some of them are technically research chemicals. Oh, God. Like So some of them are... Um, very very normal things that you would have heard of before but some of them are a bit more interesting and have more kind of sciencey based names okay and so i wanted to try a bit of everything and just kind of see what was good and what's not and just work out what i think of this and so i love this I love, well most people around how old were you when you're doing this mid-20s yeah most people around <laughs> that age are dabbling in other powders and substances to try and enhance performance you're sitting there importing herbs and all the rest 
<laughs> Self-medicating naturally. Your, your mother must be so proud, eh? <laughs> it's a bit weird, isn't it? But yeah. I, I definitely. I mean, like, it shouldn't be. It should be the norm. <laughs> it should be. I, I still partook in all like the all the fun, silly stuff. But in my head, I was like, this is the best way to kind of have your cake and eat it too. Yeah, good. Okay. So then you can Love you this. can do a big week of stuff, have a massive whopper weekend, but then not feel terrible and not ruin your body and ruin your brain. Yeah, wow. Because that's effectively what a lot of people are normalizing is this ups idea. Ups and downs. We just do these ups and downs roller coasters, eh? And we normalize the idea of my baseline should be a little bit stressed, and a little bit anxious, and a little bit, yeah. my mood's a little bit out. And that's okay. I've normalized it. Like, no. Your, your default should be that you feel good and you don't feel stressed and you don't feel anxious. Yeah. And I, so... I love this. I'm going to quickly grab this and apply it to some of my own lived experience here. So... 2012 Afghanistan deployed with my platoon. We conducted 67 missions in five months, captured and killed a whole bunch of dudes. And a mission would be us waking up before dark in the morning uh, and going out to six or eight helicopters, flying onto a target for between four and 12 hours to capture and kill people, spend all the day searching for weapons, bombs, and all that sort of stuff. And the dudes would just like reg- regulate themselves. Like they wake up in the morning and it's like a Red Bull or a Rippet. And it's just caffeine, caffeine, caffeine. I never drank coffee throughout my entire military career. So I was very <laughs> fortunate that my body does its own thing where I'm just so excited by being around people. It's all this childhood business of being fat and unpopular that I'm out there leading my guys, being around people, doing missions that are just so intrinsically motivating. Um, but then it'd still be that sort of emotional crash when you know your adrenal glands and everything give out at the end. Yeah, but watching course. the guys just regulate, and we would then come back, and they're on you know twenty four hours stand down. Then we go again, and just what that must do to their body, and that's why you know we talk about PTSD. As I've yeah. recently realised, it's such a nervous system thing. It is, and we, particularly in the military, so completely segregate mental health from physical health and wellness yeah. and particularly what going into your body actually having an impact on your mental health yeah. is even a bridge that even myself before speaking with you or some others haven't done that we go right mental health problems that's psychiatrist that's these medications that's this that's this whereas i had my own crash a month ago and breath work deregulation looking at my heart rate variation regulating yep. my body you know i'm assuming that's why the whoop bands yeah on the whoop. HIV. Yeah. yeah not sponsored by whoop but reach out um <laughs> <laughs> even watching that mate i was in court yesterday um with my case against the abc and i literally posted on my social media my heart rate variation and it goes up to three three is the highest of your stress levels yep. and you can literally see we went we're in court three times with a couple of gaps in between up in three, down to, you know, one and a half, one, up to three. Like, yeah. and I was sitting at the back doing nothing. Yeah. I felt calm, cool and collected, but watching what my body was actually doing. Yeah. And now appreciating why I'm having these issues with huge cortisol spikes, fluid retention, low testosterone, poor sleep. Well, that's kind of it. Like, so there's, there's a few different things, some of which you're fully aware of and some of which is bubbling under the surface, which you're not fully aware of. Yeah. Because... There is so many bits and pieces for us to be aware of at any one time. Yeah. Like right now, what we're doing is we're, we're taking in so many different bits of information that our brain can only really handle a few bits of stimulus at one time. And when you're really concentrating on something, you might not be aware of all the other th- things that are going on. But that doesn't mean that it's still uh, not affecting you. Yeah. So yesterday, you were so intrigued and focused on what was actually happening that you weren't even thinking about the fact that you're stressed. Yeah. Your body, however, is, is well, going nuts. I'm sitting there going... I, I missed the gym yesterday and I'm sitting there feeling guilty because I haven't worked out. And then I go and have a look at my, you know, whoop thing. And it's like, hey, your, your heart rate level was 1.5 times higher than it's been all week. And your sleep was only five hours sleep last night. And your stress and recovery, you need more recovery from yesterday than you did from the two gym sessions I did the day before. And it's just like, yeah. it's such a, a mind fuck for someone yeah. like me who's been conditioned that stress, performance, fatigue, recovery are all linked to physical exertion as opposed yeah. to emotional or you know, um, nervous system or whatever else. Exactly. So like emotional and mental is a huge, huge part of it. And I think creating a link between the three yeah. is what's really going to help people to start to move forward. Yeah. When they start to think of their physical health and their mental health as just health. Yes. And I think that's what's really going to allow people to move forward. And that's kind of what's on the cusp for a lot of big development in uh, mental health conversations, physical health conversations, supplementation, vitamins, medical it's just moving through and it's education as well. A lot of oh, people massive. have no idea about half of this well, stuff. Even conversations with you, that's why I want to have you on. It's literally reprogramming my own understanding. Yeah. Because like I see a psychiatrist and for my own mental health struggles the last three years, you know, I have my 
um, antidepressants. And then, you know, I have ADHD apparently and then I take my Vyvanse, which focuses me so much. But for someone with my nervous system PTSD issues, it just jacks me up yeah. full of, you know, whatever else, cortisol, dopamine, everything. And because I'm not actively in my own physical health, deregulating myself. Yep. I'm having sleep issues. I'm having performance issues, all these sorts of things. Yep. Um, and you, like you said, mate, bridging that gap is, it's literally new doc- new doctrine to me. It's a completely it, new textbook. It's, it's, that's the part that actually I found probably the, the most confronting when I was learning about all this is a lot of the preconceived notions I had, the stuff that I thought I knew, I was just dumping it. Yep. And that was probably the m- biggest turning point for me is when I realized that I knew so, so little that even thinking that I knew something was a danger to learning new information. Yeah, right. And so I just started to think, no, I, I'm just going to learn everything as if I have no idea. Good on you. And it was just a great way just to relearn what I'm actually wanting to focus on because otherwise you'll just be like one of these people who goes, oh, no, that doesn't sound right because of misled, misguided That's information it. I learned 10 years ago. That's it. I put it in the woo-woo bucket. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so at the start I was the exact same. So half the stuff I was like reading about and learning about, and I was like, oh, pfft, I don't know about this. Yeah. And then I was going, hang on, what made me default to that belief pattern of oh, I don't know about that. And I'm like, is it because it's challenging my views? Yeah. And I'm now standing up for my view. And then I'm kind of going, where do these views even come from? Oh, I love it. Like half the stuff that's existing in my head that's now riled up by the, this new information I'm learning, I'm like, this isn't information I, I sought after. I, I never learned about how my brain works through mental health struggles yeah. and going up and down. You don't learn about this in high school. Nope. And so you don't learn this in university, like um, unless you're specifically studying a degree in it. So... Why the hell do I think I know anything about it? Good on you for having that mindset. It's so difficult to have that self-awareness and that curiosity that you allow yourself to almost be, you know, intellectually vulnerable. Well, I just think it's, um, it, it takes a while to kind of get there because, yeah, your defense is up to be like, no, I'm strong and I'm in command and I'm all good and all this. I know all the things. Yeah. Or I can Google them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly, <laughs> right? And so once you kind of go, hang on a sec, like, I, I know only a few things that I actually have spent the time properly fact-checking and know about, but most of the stuff that's going on, I have no idea about, and that's yeah. okay. And I was just like, well, now. let's just learn about the stuff that's the most important to me. And so at the time, I wanted to dedicate my life toward trying to work out what's going to make my brain more effective yeah. and also improve my ability to handle uh, huge amounts of stress and yeah. also erratic mood. Gotcha. And so a lot of people around me are in the same kind of a boat. Like, so this is why you're in your office with your little baggies of nootropics coming from all places in the world yeah so i i got like a micro scales that imported all these powders and <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, it it's sounds like so bad it's it? nootropics narco i love it yeah I, I once i mentioned my dad i got a micro scales and he was like oh what don't be a drug dealer i'm like i'm not being a drug dealer um, I mean, good on your dad for knowing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. It tells me about his backstory, right? Narcos. He's watching Narcos. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that's it. Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, so uh, basically, so I w- had a four kilo Tupperware container. Um, I would one at home, one in the office. And it was a weird orangey brown powder. And it was 22 separate ingredients that I'd carefully measured out the exact amount according to the science that I basically read. Dose. Self taught or Javi Yogi or? No, I will, um, not. Most. Prime, Primarily self-taught. I had a few um, friends who were way smarter than me in the areas yeah, okay. of um, mental health um, and also just um, from natrop- um, naturopathy backgrounds, nutritionist backgrounds. And I was kind of just thinking, God, I'd love to like kind of know the, the things that they knew. And so anyway, I had these this brown powder and approximately, because um, dose is everything, so that it had to be weighed down to the exact milligram of everything. Okay. And that's something that a lot of people don't realize is you can't just have an ingredient like one thing at the moment is, say, collagen. Collagen, um, yes. Good, so good for your skin? It's yay yeah, and nay. Uh, um, it, it is, it is, it is. Um, okay. But it's it's an interesting one because a lot of people just think, oh, I've had it and, and now I'm going to get the benefits. I'm yeah. like, no, it'll only give you benefits if you have enough of it. But that's the same for all of nootropics as well. So some people think, oh, yeah, but I had something that had ashwagandha, so I'm going to be sweet. I'm like, no, you won't be sweet unless you've had the right amount. (laughs) And more often than not, a lot of the supplements out there are highly sub-therapeutic, which basically means they don't have the right amount. That's why I feel like we're in this place where we're starting to learn the executive summary of some of these nootropics. And as long as it's listed, we tick that box. 
and we're done. And at the end of this, I yeah. want you to give us some little health hacks because you've already taught me some pretty cool things. But I'll, I'll, ru- I'll run through all the dosing, yeah, all that sweet. stuff in a, in a moment. But yeah, I, I was the exact same. Like when I was younger, I had no idea. And so I just look out for a word and you'd learn the word maybe when you're 14 and try and put muscle on creatine. Yes. And you go, oh, it's got creatine. I've got no idea how much I need, but yeah. that word equals big muscles. And that's what I want when I'm 14 because yeah. I'm trying to play footy and all this jazz. Yep. Um, but yeah, so... It was all based on dose, so I had this uh, four kilo Tupperware container. All, it basically just started with just me um, having it and then raving to a bunch of my like uh, fellow co-workers and your people lawyer, on my your team. Your lawyer friends, my lawyer mates. Okay, uh, just so going. in the, in the legal office, you have a four kilo tub T- of, yeah, so it, of brown I, I, powder. Just something I bought literally in Kmart, just that was big enough to go ahead and hold all this stuff because I'm going through ten grams um, at a time, and I had a feeling people would start getting their hands into it. And I wanted we, we drinking it with as a tea or what were you doing? So I was just. Uh, four kilo Tupperware container in, uh, so 10 gram scoop from a tablespoon. I put yeah. it in a glass of water and then I put cordial on top because it tasted disgusting. Okay. So some of the ingredients in there were awful, um, but they were really, really but good, good for you. Oh, yeah. Phenomenally good for you, but just tasted terrible. Got it. And so uh, after a little bit, some of my friends were curious and they'd go ahead and give it a red hot crack and they'd come over and be like, all right, so what do I do? I'm like, tablespoon, 10 grams, put cordial, it's out in the fridge. Um, and then they w- always come and, to my office uh, within the next uh, day or two, or they'd ping me on the intermediate like a uh, chat channel and basically just be like, mate, th- this is incredible. I feel like I've had like three coffees in one, but it lasted way longer, but I didn't get jitters. I didn't have a crash. Yeah. I wasn't overstimulated. I just felt really, really good. Wow. I was just focused and feeling nice and I didn't feel crappy afterwards. What the hell? And then I, I'd get so excited and be like, yeah. okay, so it's because of, and I'd start rattling off the different ingredients. Oh, it's the right amount of That's phosphatidyl so serine. Inventing things. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, so I'd get so pumped up and I'm like, all right, have you heard of rhodiola before? No, you've never heard of rhodiola, is it? Well, let me tell you all about it. It's in there. And then I'd start like listing off the amounts and why, and I'd, like their eyes are glazed over. Yeah, I got it. They're just regular people. And they just want the performance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like, like most consumers. Yeah, yeah. And so some of the nicer nicer ones would just sit there and nod for a few minutes and then be like, oh, sorry, man, I got to get to work. Yeah, I got it. Um, or other ones would just be like, oh, dude, like just, just be stoked it works. But yeah, I, I don't know any of this stuff, so I don't care. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, that's cool, that's all. And then I realized heaps of people love that it works, but they don't love, they don't want to know why it works. They're never going to recreate this stuff. And then it got to a stage that words started to spread across the firm. So after a couple of months, there was just people I re- barely recognized from the lift coming into my office and knocking the door being like, hey, I work with um, uh, Roman, who's part of your team. And um, anyway, uh, he said you have a special brain powder, <laughs> like herbal drink mix thing. Uh, any chance I could try it? And it'd be like, yeah, sure, mate. It's in the cupboard. Um, and they'd be there with like a, a glass like um, and a spoon. So they're ready to rock and roll. So they, they've heard the drill. Ten grand. I this love and, this. And so I'd be like, yeah, sure, no worries. And go out. But they'd always feel the need to come back to the office, email me or ping me and just go. Or they'd just hunt me down like a Friday night drinks and just be like, mate, that stuff, it, it's really good. It works. <laughs> and I'm like, I know. That's why I have it. It's li-. And then I kind of realized... Uh, like, but what's really in it? Like, honestly, yeah, what's yeah. actually in it? Yeah, they'd go uh, ahead and be like, are you, mate, are you sure there's not like a little bit of something in here? <laughs> and I'm like, no, honestly, everything in here is natural. It's all above board. It's oh, just wow. it's a mixture of just nootropics, adaptogens, amino acids, vitamins, and minerals. It's just yeah, everything wow. in like a big amount. It's just literally, if you Google search all the stuff that my brain needs at like maximum dose that's going to be highly therapeutic and that's just all it is just in one serve so it's just going to make your brain perform at the things that it needs and half the stuff that's in there people don't even know exists and like they don't even know where to search for how to have it and etc so that's what um was really cool and so friends would start to ask me uh questions like oh great so mate i love it where do i get this stuff um and i was like oh you you can't and he's like what do you mean i'm like well, it just it doesn't exist like this. Oh, like, wow. there's nothing out there in the world that has 22 ingredients like this mixed together. Like, okay, cool. That you're importing from all around the world. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And, and then they're like, all right, cool. It, like, is this something that's kind of similar? Like, where do I go? Like, how do I get it? And then I was like, dude, there's like literally nothing. There's a few places in America and maybe in Europe that are kind of similar, but it's not going to be as good. It's not as strong. It's not as many ingredients. Oh, wow. But you could probably get your rough ideas together. Um, and then I think that was really cool that I'm like the only person making something that's like this high quality. And then when I realized that's, that's not cool, that's actually pretty crap for your common man, because yeah. while it's great for us to go ahead and be like, cool, um, 
got this amazing product that's going to allow us to mentally perform at the highest possible level, but also look after our mental health at the same time. So we're not going to be burning out like so many other people are yeah. who are working 16 hour days and 18 hour days for a week at a time. And so, or several weeks at a time. Yeah, wow. And so I realized that this is something I need to do beyond just my, my law job. And I liked I liked law, but when people would ask me about this product and be like, how does it work? Why does it work? It lit me up. Yeah, nice. The and passion. I get, yep. Yeah, and, I, and I, I've never felt passion about anything at all. Like oh, at really? the time, um, I was trying to work out what I would do if I wasn't working as a lawyer. And I used to take the occasional sick day and just sit at home with a big piece of butcher paper and just write down stuff that I like. And I was trying to work out... I was trying to work just, out. just like everyone does in their day off. <laughs> <laughs> I, was to, I was trying to work out like what I might like to do because I was like... Do, Surely I've got like some kind of passion or interest and I was just feeling a bit jaded and a bit like kind of yeah. unproductive with Looking life. Love the purpose, love that. Okay. It, exactly, which is what I was Trust trying me, to... Trust me, so many people listening to this can definitely uh, uh, understand where you're coming from there. Yeah, just that kind of like what's going to make me tick. Like I'm, I've, I've done a thing, like I'm working in law, great. Why am I working in law? Well, probably because I'm an overly competitive younger brother of a high achieving older sister. Oh yeah, social psychology, let's go. So I'm assuming that's why I went for it, yep. is a uh, phenomenally gifted older sister. She can do it. Younger brother who's a little bit, um, uh, I guess, not a little bit, highly competitive. Yeah. I want to do it too. I can, I'm going to try and go ahead and do it as well. Yeah. And um, I had no idea whether I wanted to do it. It just seemed like the right thing to do. And then you're kind of halfway through a career before you kind of stop and you think, hang on, this is shit. Yeah, wow. Like, this isn't filling me up. I'm not liking what I'm doing. Well, good on you. So and many people have never reached that point. <laughs> yeah, or they feel a bit trapped and yeah. they're like, oh, well, no, I need the money because it does pay well and it pays for the lifestyle that I like. So Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so I, I was just before that kind of cusp. And so when I made the call to quit life as a lawyer and try and start this whole business, I was in my late 20s. I was extraordinarily privileged that I had the option to move back home with parents. How, not, how long had you been a lawyer for at that stage? At this stage, uh Three and a half, four years. Okay, gotcha. All so right. not a super long amount of time. But, but like still into it. I mean, probably at a bit of a cusp at that time in your career as well. Yeah, well, I remember like after the first years being like, oh, this is pretty shit. I don't really like this. And then like you have a lot of like uh, friends and family. Like, Mate, you just spent six years getting this like really expensive piece of paper. Yeah. Like give it a crack. Just, just well, do it for a few more years. You told me some statistics on like mental health and all the rest within the legal fraternity as it was the other day. Yeah, so so for people who don't know, law is like one of the most prevalent um, professions with mental health issues. Like yeah. dentistry, I think is numero uno, I'm pretty sure law is number two. Oh, wow. So there's a huge amount of like issues with mental health, burnout, depression, anxiety, chronic stress. And, and even the, um, the pipeline you were telling me about of how many lawyers are actually recruited each year and... Oh, yeah, that's probably the most like upsetting statistic. So I work as an honorary fellow at the University of Technology, Sydney, and I'll be doing... Of course you do. A <laughs> <laughs> that was on the butcher's I, paper. I, like, I, top I right corner. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I still had that paper. Oh, I love that. Um, yeah. It was... Yeah, so I'm actually doing something in, in August for the new intake of law students. Okay. Um, and so I'll be talking about, hey, congrats, like you're here, blah, blah, blah. Um, and try and do some kind of a, a pump up talk. So, but the only thing is, I spoke to um, the, I guess the deans who would be assisting me with it. And I was like, you know that I'm not super pro law. And they're like, yeah, 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 but, but tell your part of the story. Okay. And I'm like, yeah, but I think it's kind of sad. Like for a profession that only has 60 to 70,000 jobs available, we're pumping out around 15,000 lawyers every year. Oh, wow. So that's not okay. If we can replenish the entire pool of lawyers every four to five years, that's not okay. Like the Big average turnover. length of that career is way along the four or five years, which means a lot of the people who are currently in university right now studying to want to be a lawyer, they, if they're not one of the brightest in the class or middle and above, they're yeah. going to have a hard time getting a job. Yeah, wow. And that's not okay when you've spent five or six years getting a very expensive piece of paper because that hex debt's going to be somewhere between fifty and $100,000. Oh, wow. Get you know, it. Oof. And you got to pay that back. You could start up your own business with that money. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a hard one. So yeah, that's a, a bit of a shame. And so I try and take a slightly different tack to um, law students, where I just tell them, "Hey, look, it's a great, very worthwhile degree. Just please be aware that um, getting a job in this industry, especially one of the top jobs, can be challenging. Yeah. And the statistics, unfortunately, are slightly against you. Yeah. And that's okay because it's a, an amazing degree, and you can do whatever the hell you want with it. Like, I think law is one of the most popular degrees for people who don't even work in law. Yeah, right. They just have it. I mean, that's such a great 
mindset as well. We do a lot of work at the moment. I do a lot of work at the moment with the whole the whole defence recruitment and transition piece is what really is actually failing so many veterans because we are recruiting veterans on this infinite career. Like it's going to be your life. And what happens is, particularly when younger veterans and particularly younger men, when for some reason, be it performance, they're removed, be it injury, they're perf- removed, they're the ones who have the highest risk of mental ill health and suicidality because they've been indoctrinated and recruited for this mindset that it's going to be their career forever and they've a fixed part of their identity to achievement within that. I researched this actually after we spoke um, a week and a half ago yep. and I was actually pretty appalled by the level of support that's given yeah. after the fact. Um, well, well it's just It's in the wrong the re-indoctrination or the transition component from defence goes down the exact sort of white collar slash corporate, you know, bureauc- bureaucratic approach that you're probably well akin to in that we reconstitute people's identity based on their resume or their CV, what they've, what piece of paper they can carry forward moving from a lifestyle that's focused on for purpose yep. to a society that's focused on for profit from a lifestyle that's had every element of Maslow's hierarchy of needs to achieve self-actualization to mm-hmm. all of a sudden, I mean, I remember I first went to the doctor. I'm like, do you have a Medicare card? I was like, no. <laughs> I'm like, how do you get a Medicare card? They're yeah. like, oh, you do this, you do this. And I was, you know, 35 years old. I've been yeah. com- a commander of men in combat and I'm sitting there struggling to get a Medicare card. <laughs> you can imagine the, you know, personal emasculation you're sort of feeling. And yeah. there's just none of that cultural preparation. So, yeah, lots of work. Anyway, we digress. Tell us about moving in with your parents. <laughs> <laughs> back to the... Back Transitions. To the, Transitions. Back to the cool story. Life. Yeah. 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 So, at the time... Um, you as said you're very privileged, very privileged to move in with your parents. I was just lucky that it was an available option. Otherwise, I don't yep. know if I would have made this full full thing. And I think it's just an important thing to mention, like, because um, it would be remiss of me to, to say that um, I had this option. I didn't kind of acknowledge the privilege that I had, did have because okay. I think a lot of people, uh, yeah, are quite unaware of how privileged you are to have that kind of a setup. Yeah, so I'm with you. Yep. The fact that I had that safety net was life-changing because I couldn't afford, um, I couldn't quit my job and try and start up a brand new thing that was going to make no money and I still pay bills for food and for water and for electricity and, and, and rent. rent. Yeah. So I was just like, okay, tail between the legs. It's not great for dating life, but whatever. Um, Man, after the election last year, I moved in with my mum for six months. It was one of the most depressing things ever. But then I realised... <laughs> Your mum's great. I know. <laughs> but I went. it was, it was just a tail between the legs social expectation piece, particularly as a single gay man as well. It's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but it just... Just yeah. appreciating what you have instead of what you don't have. That's why I really resonate with you, like acknowledging that with your parents. Eh? Yeah, well, it's just, it's it's a weird little time to, to get back in. And, and I, I remember when I when I came back home, mum and dad kind of half thought, well, like, maybe some a mental health breakdown. Oh, maybe, yeah. maybe um, you'll, you'll probably get back to it. You sure don't like law? Uh, like good. I don't know. And I was like, no, 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 no. Nutrition. I'm going to create a product that hasn't actually existed in the Australian market before. There's not actually Bold. a category for it in Coles Woods or anything. And Love that. Cool new tropics. And anyway, so mum's kind of going, what the hell is this? And my dad's just kind of like assuming it's probably like a, a thing and I'll be back on my feet and out of the house in like okay. a few months. And just kind of, yeah, yeah, sweet, no worries, mate. You do you. So, all right, cool. Um, anyway, turns out that... Um, I just fell more and more in love with this idea that I wanted to try and create because I, I'd seen it firsthand that the current options that we have and how they're failing people. Yep. So huge amounts of caffeine to get more work done is just not the option. And people have no idea that there are so many other modalities that you can have to improve your energy and performance that aren't related to caffeine. So energy drinks and iced coffees and coffees and teas and yerba mate, you name whatever the caffeine-based product is, People think that that's the only option. Yep. There's so many more. And the other ones are actually so, so good because they don't make you feel like crap afterwards. So what does caffeine stimulate? Is it all adrenal? So um, rookie, way, rookie here, throwing out things I think I might know. No, no, no. So how caffeine basically works is yes. So adrenals um, are absolutely necessary for the um, working of caffeine. But it's basically, caffeine is kind of a fun one because it doesn't actually give you energy. It just blocks the stuff that actually makes you feel tired, which is oh. called adenosine. So I like to imagine um, how it works is all day long, imagine that little bits of adenosine are going down like a water slide and they're trying to bind to... Uh, what's called a receptor site. Okay. And so what it, um, caffeine does is kind of like just a dam. It's just like a big kid lying across the, the water slide. <laughs> I'm there mentally. So, yep. so, so now one can go I ahead. I was that big kid once. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> so no one can get past. Yep. And then so that idea of like an energy crash, it doesn't actually give you, um, it's not actually an energy crash, it's just basically that dam has gone away. So now way more things that are naturally meant to make you feel tired throughout the day all go to the receptor site and make you feel a bit more tired. Yeah, right. And so while that effect of um, uh, caffeine... So is that ba- crash is when the big kid moves and all those... Yeah, the thing the, the natural piling down the water slide because the natural process is that you should across the day slowly accumulate things that make you feel more tired, and all that's doing is blocking that process. How dare they? Yeah, right. And that's basically so. But while that process is blocked, um, your body starts to go, oh, "What the hell?" Like something, something not natural is happening, and so it'll start to go ahead and release larger amounts of cortisol, which is your stress hormone, yeah. and that'll go ahead and kick a few other things into gear. And then anyway, long story short, you'll end up with larger amounts of different neurotransmitters and also adrenals get into gear, which are, allow for noradrenaline and adrenaline, and that's kind of the neurotransmitters, which is kind of like fight or flight of energy, yep. which is why sometimes when people have caffeine, some people are fine and yeah. other people can't have it because they get way too jittery, way yeah, too yeah. anxious. And, and that's just how sensitive you are to caffeine. But it's also We call them the flighters. The fighters are good. The flighters, yeah. they're no good. They're not as good. Um, <laughs> and just, it's, it's a bit more a challenging thing. So um, what we just wanted to... The whole idea of why I wanted to do this is just to create something that is way, way better than that and shows people, hey, caffeine isn't the only option. There is myriad ways to get better um, mental performance, but also mental health. And so it took me... Months and months and months working um, on the project by itself to, and also speaking to two separate nutritionists, a naturopath, a dietitian, and I even had a neuroscientist in, involved at one stage. Oh, wow. Just to double check that everything I'm doing makes sense and is actually correct. Because these people, I just revered the way smarter than me. I'm studying nutrition in my own little time. Yeah. I was doing a few little diplomas and degrees and stuff. Uh, truth be told, by the time I actually quit Laura, I already had a few little feathers in my hat because yeah. I used to just nerd out in it so much yeah and so my next thing once i kind of put this like i um idyllic formulation together i was like great um i'd now check legalities coming from a legal background the appropriate uh, thing to do handy. was yeah read um the food act and just make sure that i can do what i wanted to do primarily i could um which was good so <laughs> there's a few gray areas there's of definitely law. <laughs> a few gray areas but we, we like but was there precedent? No, there there's, wasn't. There's nothing. Wow. Absolutely nothing. So that was the kind of challenge is like, all right, sweet. Well, let's go to Red Hot Crack. And so the next thing is, how do I want to do it? Um, do I want to do it as a drink, as a powder, as a, a gummy? I could put like this premix in a muffin. I could do whatever the hell I wanted. So yeah. I thought a drink's probably the simplest way because that's what made sense to me because that's what it was to me. It was premix with cordial and it was a nice tasting thing. So I'm like, if I can recreate that, that's what I wanted to do. Okay. And so... That's what I sought out have to you, do. Have you ever put it in a muffin? <laughs> no, but we're currently doing bars. Okay. So like, like ma- it's a, muffins are very unique. I don't know why I went to muffin. Oh, okay. The yeah. muffin man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know why I went to muffin. I was just trying to think of something. I really wanted to play on that. I'm like, are you, do you eat muffins? Do you enjoy muffins? Or? <laughs> Weirdly, I, I, I rarely eat muffins. Okay. I don't know why they popped into my head. I was like, a random food item it could be in. Good. Okay. But, um, but it could be a muffin one it, day. It absolutely could be a muffin. It's better, better be, paint that quickly in case someone on this. It, it'll <laughs> soon be like a, a, a bar, which would be pretty cool. So okay. like imagine, imagine you're kind of hungry, but you could also kind of do with a bit of a boost because you're feeling like a little bit tired. Much easier to have a bar in your pocket than a muffin as well. Much easier. Yeah, Muffins are it. way bulky in their big pockets. Yeah, I got it. Um, but yeah, so made the, made the drink. Um, then it's time to manufacture it. So I had 32 different manufacturing facilities tell me to piss off before one actually gave me a chance. And it was purely just because I was rolling my entire life savings, which up until this point was around $52,000. It wasn't much money. Um, And so, but I spent my entire life saving that money. Yeah, got it. And the goal was that I'll keep on working and then keep adding to that and eventually that'll be a deposit for a house. The kind of thing that most people kind of do, right? The conventional lifestyle, yep. And then, but instead now I dumped that all into an idea which I just kind wow, of... Wow, that's bold, man. Good which, on you. Well, I figured worst comes to worst, um, I end up at square one again. That's okay. Um, I'll jump back to a random job um, and I'll just kind of uh, redo life as it was yeah, before. Yeah, good on you. But at least I get a chance to probably better myself and better on the chance to improve people's health, yep. both physically and mentally. And that's what really kind of got me Purpose. stoked. Yeah, yeah, good on you. And, I, and the part that I w- was probably the most alarming for me was realizing that I'd never return to law. So when I said I'd get a job, it was not returning to the law firm. It was I'd do something else. Oh, wow. Okay. And I've no idea what the hell I'd do. Like everyone's kind of uh, trading time for money effectively. And I've yeah, no idea true. what the hell I'd do, but I'd do something. Okay. Um, I loved education. So I was considering even I could be a teacher. Who knows? So, but anyway, I was um, constantly being rejected by manufacturing facilities because I'm talking about using ingredients that they don't 
but they don't even know where to get. Yeah, right. Risk. So like, risk. Well, it's just it's risk. It's random. It's weird. They don't know if it's going to work. Like okay. they just want to do simple, easy jobs. People come in, say, "I got a new flavor of um of soda. I'm going to make." Yeah. It's similar to Coke, but it's a little bit different. And here's two hundred thousand dollars for our big drink run. And oh, I've done this for a few years. They want safe, simple bets. They yeah, want a dude who goes, "Oh, hey, I'm an ex-lawyer. I'm currently studying nutrition. I'm finalizing a few more things. I want to put ingredients that you've got no idea. I'll I'll yeah. source them because you don't know where to find them, yeah. and that's fine." Um, I have a black. I have a brown tub of powder. For <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's put. Yeah, I want lots of this in that big tub, yeah. and I just want to make thousands of drinks and just get them all out. So. It just took ages to get it done. And lots of places just constantly rejected. But eventually had a guy um, took a chance, which was great. Here, and, here in Australia? Yeah, here in Australia. Okay. And managed to go ahead and get it uh, done. So that was over in Perth. Oh, good on you. Um, I had exhausted the options in New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, South Australia at this stage. Throwing, so throwing shade to all those states. <laughs> However, joke's on you. Missed out. <laughs> so those states, um, ironically now, are actually great. So what's funny is... Withdrawing that shade. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just kind of funny that like now, so many years later, if you went to any of these kind of um, places and said, oh, hey, I want to make some new tropics, people are like, oh, brilliant. Yeah. That's exciting. That's the new big thing. But back then when mate, I- you're a trendsetter. Seven- Literally forging that path, mate. Good on you. <laughs> well, seven years ago, people were just like, nah, don't know what that is. Sounds weird. So sounds this random. This was seven years get ago. Out. Yeah, it was um, 2016. Jeez, get it. Yeah, wow. So, yeah, I've been- Definitely in- a trendsetter. Well, yeah, I've just been happily earning way, way less than I have since 2015. But finding that purpose. Yeah, well, yeah. People I, don't I, understand that value. I now eh? like getting out of bed. Oh, and, wow. And Sunday... That's powerful. And Sunday nights aren't depressing. Yeah, um, wow. Which is probably the biggest thing because that's just what I thought was normal is just um, the idea of a Sunday night and feeling anxious and weird and trying to stay up as late as possible because the idea of falling asleep would mean you're going back to something you don't want to do, which makes you really depressed. It's fascinating when, I think you definitely made that mark before so many, realizing that working for profit isn't actually what makes you happy. It's finding that balance, absolutely. Don't everyone go and quit and start trying to harvest new tropics and <laughs> inventing things, but you're right. You know, I definitely come from that place where you've, you're very good at earning money and it just doesn't bring you happiness unless you have that purposeful fulfillment, eh? Yeah, like you've and got usually to be helping people is the massive part of that. It's it's in some capacity, shape, or form. Like for everyone's got different like needs of what they want to try and do in specific yeah. ways. But um, for me, I just always found nutrition to be really interesting. I just never paid attention to it. Yeah, it was just something that I just thought was just a thing. Um, and just a small part of my life and like whatever, cool. Food pyramid, all about the food pyramid. That yeah. was my nutrition. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, like super basic kind of one, right? Which yeah, we yeah. all got to get like pushed the idea of. And so I never got overly excited about it. I just thought it was a thing. And then one day with that butcher's paper, I was kind of realizing, oh, actually I do like, well, I like helping people and I like nutrition and I like health and I like this and I like sport and I like uh, kind of positively influencing people's behaviors to all the better. And I like talking about, uh, helping resolve people's problems when their shit's gone real bad, and I love and I like it. talking to people about who are going through challenging times. Usually, uh, mentally, you know, I think what really kind of kicked me into this gear is um, a mate of mine just out of high school. We were inseparable. Um, we were actually talking to him on the on the phone this morning about uh, being one of the uh, best men. We're gonna have a couple. Um, I can't make a decision. So. I love it. I love this conversation. Yeah. So there'll be a, there'll be a bunch bunch of the dudes. And so, and and my sister's getting wrapped up in that as well. She, yeah. she doesn't know yet. So I hope this podcast, I've had the time to come have a chat with them. So all. Mark has a bunch of best friends who they have been each other's best men at different times, but he's now left with these people who had him as his best men and he can only pick one. And I've told him he needs to have tryouts. Yeah. <laughs> like a pop, a, competition. a pop quiz on who knows more about you can buy with some form of physical challenge <laughs> so that there can be an undisputed champion. Which I actually think is a very fun idea, but because I have to throw my sister in the ring as well, I think it's love a bit, it. No, it, hey, it, careful, we're not sexist on this podcast. She no, could, no, no, <laughs> no. I wasn't I'm suggesting kidding, I'm that. Kidding, I'm kidding. I was saying she's going to win. Oh wow! Yeah. No, 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 no. Love that. Um, but yeah, it's it's a little um, uh, interesting. I got a oh, yeah, so interesting so, dynamic. Yep. So that um, so that best friend basically we like even looked identical to the stage which I loved back in high school that I'd get detention and say, oh, your yeah, my name's Matt." And so, that's amazing. And then he would find out that he skipped detention. He'd get a Saturday detention. Oh, you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but well played. Uh, but he did, no, he did the same thing back to me. Oh, okay, cool. Um, and so it was a bit of a, a weird little fun thing. But um, basically, just out of high school, we're, we're the best time ever. Um, 
in school, which is I know is a, a, a thing that not everyone can can say. And so we had a great time, and then we're at university at this stage, and so we're, we're both just like young, carefree, and whatever. Except that he wasn't, and then all of a sudden he just got hit really heavily with mental health issues. Oh, really? And okay. so, which kind of made me wonder what happened. Like, just all of a sudden, it just things just changed for him in a huge, huge way. And I remember trying to be with, um, be there for him as much as I could. And um, it just made me so, so interested in this concept of mental health because I just took it all for granted. Yeah. And then I realized when there's things that are potentially out of place, it can actually totally affect how you think and you feel and you act and it kind of controls everything, your urges to do everything else. Absolutely. And so that's when I realized mental health is something I am super interested in doing. Yeah. I work as a board member for a large mental health charity and I try and... And I think that was probably the reason why I liked Nootropic so much is because... It was two things I really love. Like, if anyone's seen the movie Limitless by Bradley Cooper, yeah. like that whole idea of we taking all want something, that pill. <laughs> yeah, taking something that just makes you like super, super, like on the ball. Like, you know, you're remembering dates and your memory's like phenomenally good, but you're also just really, really fast. You're switched on. Like, I always kind of like, I always revered those kind of qualities in someone, as someone who's just really quick. They're fast witted. They're they're sharp and fresh. Not obviously under the influence. Yeah, exactly. And so I thought that's really cool. But at the same time, if you can have that, but also be mentally very healthy by having a good natural resilience to stress and anxiety. So you still get affected by stress and anxiety like everyone does, yeah. but as you handle it much better and you manage it much better, but also your mood is not erratic. So like in the morning you're great. And then by the afternoon you're devastated. You actually just feel uh, your, your normal should just be, I feel good. Yeah. And so I realized that that's the thing that I want to try and help people to do in some different way, shape or form. I didn't think I had what it takes to be a therapist, so I thought, no. So this with the Nootropics thing really kind of came perfectly together as all of my entwining interests. So I love this activity, this butcher's paper activity of listing like what you enjoy doing yeah. and then trying to craft a career out of that. Do you do like a workshop on that? No, so I, I did go to a few workshops about it and I would just like Google searching things like how to find your passion, how to find your purpose, yeah. what should I do with my life. That's so good. Um, and there's, there's blog articles out there about it and there's also, there's actually a seminar I went to called Finding Your Purpose and it was, it spoke about this kind of idea of just take the time to go ahead and work out what the hell makes you tick. Yeah, love and it. so that was that's why I did those at that intrinsic and extrinsic level. Exactly, yeah, and that's why brilliant. I did those weird things like taking off a sick day and sitting at home, turning my phone off, and just sitting there with a few simple questions I had to answer about myself and a massive thing of butcher paper. I mean, self reflection one hundred and one, and living in the moment. Good but on no, you. but no one's doing that because no. you think about it like, oh, I got to run from A to B. I better take. I'll I'll give my friend a call, or I'll track some music on, yep. or a blog, um, or a podcast. There's always there's always things that someone things else to self develop as opposed to you reflecting and self. Yeah. developing yeah, and, wow. and what, know. Well, what was really weird is um, when you start to go ahead and realize what it's like to get to know yourself it's it almost like your body's throwing up urges to try and do other stuff like I remember the first few times I was trying to like work on what's called a why ladder so I like this why do I like this okay because of this but why and this and why and you just keep asking yourself oh, why and you're trying to work out you sound like a horrible friend of mine <laughs> and um yeah <laughs> but why so you're okay. just trying to work get down to your core like it, it's it's like I know what we spoke about before. Why do we have those preconceived notions? Yeah. So why am I programmed the way I'm programmed? Yeah, is basically systems. what you're yeah. trying to figure out. That's the crux of what you're trying to get to. Is I view the world in this particular way. What the hell has led me to believe the way um, has led me to believe the things that I believe about life yeah. the way I do? Because I'm not right and no one else is right. It's just my own particular view. Yeah. So why have I f shaped this view? I've never set out to go ahead and go, one day I want to feel strongly about this particular political party. Like, yeah. I never do that, but somehow that's ended up as a viewpoint for me. So you, when you deconstruct it and you go, why the hell am I thinking like this? And then you kind of go back and you take a few steps at a time, hence the why ladder. Yeah. And it's weird. It's like your body starts to feel uncomfortable as hell. And like suddenly I'm like, oh my God, I didn't take a piss. Oh shit, I haven't called my parents in a few weeks. Suddenly you're hit with all the, I better clean the house. Distractions, yeah, distractions, yeah. distractions. Your body is actually uncomfortable with hitting vulnerable parts of your body because you're yeah. finally getting real with yourself and that's an unpleasant sensation. So your body tries to distract you. Yeah, gotcha. And so you, you basically need to sit there and be like, no, 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 no. I'm staying in my chair until this particular time and I looked out I had a little like timer next to me yeah. so it basically mean I can't move for another 20 yeah, minutes discipline. I need to get this done and I just need to keep answering the questions just get really really done. and you, you get weirdly emotional at times yeah. and stuff but that was the whole idea of, of uh, this butcher paper thing and what kind of led me to change my life dramatically so once I realised what I'm doing is not making me happy I started moving in that direction I hadn't managed to connect all the dots yet but 
purely by virtue of this nootropic powder in the law firm, it just allowed me to one day just be like, I had a eureka moment. Oh yeah, my God, God yeah. this is what it has to be. But you took it up. Like that's a bold move. It's fantastic you had that creativity that you, you know, self-researched and collaborated with to discover. But then that decision to completely shift axis and move into the great unknown in a market that is the Australian market. I, I have a lot of time and spend a lot of time, have a lot of love for the US, you know, with a population of 300 million people and all the homegrown resources and industries. I find Australia, yeah. in the US, you can dip your toe in the pond to test the water. Yep. Australia had to jump in head first. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no other way to do it. And I mean, and moving in with your parents and doing the rest, you sort of did exactly that, didn't you? Well, it's, it just makes it really, really hard. Like, and you, you feel a bit, uh, and things take way longer than you think they would, uh, which makes it challenging as well. Yeah. And so I kind of had it in my head that I'm going to create a product and get the whole thing out. And in about six months, I'm going to have a drink and it's, uh, it's going to be successful. And you have all these ideas and it's not that at all. What was um, the reality from that first? The reality is it took me about, um, well, I didn't expect to have 33, 32 places say no to me. Yeah, so I'm literally wow. flying into state. So you get yourself all pumped up. Oh, I got five appointments over the next three days at this place in Melbourne. Great. No, 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 no. Cool. So I hop back and back home, and you you spent money on accommodation and flights, and you felt the whole thing was a complete oh, waste dear. of time. And so I'm working part time uh, back as a tutor, and uh, just doing random little gigs that I could to try and make a few bucks that aren't going to take up too much of my time. So I can primarily focus on starting a business. Yeah. And. And then when you feel you've wasted all that time, all that money, then you're like, oh, I've just spent like three weeks getting that money together off those flights to just be told no and just get rejected again. You're like, oh, no. Nah. Oh, wow. And then you got to go ahead and kind of pick yourself back up. And be like, come on, mate. Like, and then, so yeah, you just got to keep going and going and going and going. And then finally got a place that made it, got made it over in Perth. Made 11,000 drinks, sold out in five weeks. Oh, okay. So once they were finally made, they were then brought back over to Australia. And I have a, a beaten up old Honda Jazz. East, which, um, East coast of Australia. Yeah. East Coast, got it, yeah. And so a I... Be- a beaten up what, sorry? A beaten up Holder, um, Honda Jazz. That was oh, the car. Oh, get it. Yeah, and yeah. so when you put up the hatchback, I would literally just be putting so many of the drinks in. Yeah. And it'd be like driving a boat because it was it was definitely overweight. And oh. I was just driving around the city, basically just dropping off all the orders. Yeah. So I started telling my mates that these were available. And then what was really cool is... My mates would um, share it with their friends and their friends and their friends. It was exactly the effect that I wanted, which awesome. is Word everyone's mouth, going, yeah. exactly. I spent no money advertising. I barely even had a functional website, but people are just going bananas. And then after five weeks, I didn't expect it would go that fast. I'm like, oh shit. Um, okay, well, I spent this amount of money and I've gotten most of it back. Cool, let's, let's re-roll that dice. Yeah. Um, how do I get more money so I can do it better next time? And, and how do I get the skill set to actually make this at scale so... I'm not just doing a trial drink where it's going to cost about three dollars to make because you can't. That's yeah. not a profitable. Or I can't make a drink for three dollars and sell it for like five or six dollars. And your logistic plan is the Honda Jazz. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's not scalable, is it? No. So, <laughs> so I do work. At, More Honda Jazzes. <laughs> yeah, just a fleet of Honda Jazzes. So, yeah. um, at the at that point in time, I was like, all right, cool. What do I do? So. I then started speaking to uh, a whole... I started going to a whole lot of different networking seminars and just try and just talk to as many people as possible about Community. this potential idea. Yeah, work out... Because I knew nothing. Like, all of my friends and stuff at this stage were still people who used to work in uh, law and similar kind of professional-based gigs. And, okay. And I knew nothing about uh, manufacturing, food, retail, any of that stuff. And I was yep. like, this needs to be... I need to dump all my old mates and basically recruit all these new people and just learn how this lifestyle works. And so I just spent the next year and a bit trying to do that, work out how to do it so I can make um, make a product at a, a way more appropriate level, start trying to work out how the hell I'm going to sell this thing in a, in a far more efficacious way because running around the city, selling it um, to mates, through the back of my Honda Jazz is just not going to cut it yeah, next right. time and next time. So I finally managed to go ahead and get the, the next run done and then managed to get a... Uh, we were just about ready to, to launch it and then COVID happened. Oh, shit, And son. so that was unfortunate, but we pivoted. So I thought, great, well, people can't go out and get their coffees. Yeah. And this product actually works phenomenally well with coffee oh. because it has a little bit of... Um, uh, some of the ingredients can potentiate and the that, effect sorry, of that's caffeine. This, that's this product we're talking about right here. Yeah. So the ingredients that go in here uh, will affect 
um, the, uh, the benefits of, sorry, will affect coffee and make it have more benefits. So oh, effectively, wow. you'll get more of a mood boost out of it. It'll make the effects last for a longer period of time. You won't have a crash. You won't have jitters. So it basically is just like turning a regular coffee into a super coffee by just simply adding a whole bunch of extra ingredients. Get it. And that's what I was doing in the morning effectively. Before coffee or after coffee? Uh, with coffee. Same time. Literally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, no, it's, so it's the, the special ingredients that go in here, which is just imagine that 10 gram yeah, yeah. Uh, tablespoon. You could just put that in your coffee instead. Oh. Yeah, or you could just have it, um, or you could stir it up with water and just kind of have it like an unpleasant tasting green juice shot kind of a thing, Got and it. then have the coffee afterwards. Okay. And all it's going to do is make that coffee last longer and have more benefits. Got it, okay. So I then thought, what if I just can, um, put the two together? And so we then oh, made bi- we biodegradable compostable coffee pods. This was during COVID. You did this. Dur- yeah. So basically, um, then we, we managed to get the whole thing out within like a month and a half, two months. Oh, get it. Which was really, really cool. And so suddenly we're selling uh, Nespresso compatible biodegradable compostable coffee pods, which have Look at all it, responsible these- as well as performance. <laughs> well, yeah, because you just want to... Because five... To six million Australians every day have a f- plastic or foil coffee pod from Nespresso or w- Law or whatever those large brands are, which over the year equates to about 1.2 to 1.3 billion pods. Wow. Now, I know they're only five and a half or six grams, but if you go ahead and you put them all together, it's like 60 buses of garbage that go to landfill every year just from that tiny habit of just that morning coffee. Wow. And that could all be avoided by having... Look at this man here. He's got all the facts. I love it. Oh, yeah, I, I research. Yeah, stuff. you have a very yeah. critical and curious mindset. It's brilliant. And so because of that, instead, if you have a biodegradable compostable capsule, which will break down over about 10 weeks, well, okay. coffee is actually a phenomenal fertilizer. Oh. So that will work really well um, back into nature. It started as dirt. It ends as dirt. It's a great little circle. And that's how it should be, except <laughs> that we've stuffed it up yeah. um, I'm not sure if I can swear so oh, you know. absolutely can okay yeah. well basically fuck the whole thing up by having plastic and foil yeah, got because it. that's going to stop it so if you instead put it it's in the fat kid it's the fat kid on the um, it is it, on, on, the, the, on the slide <laughs> again <laughs> he's <been laughs> <laughs> and so it's yeah, yeah. it's basically just creating something that's much, much healthier. So I put that out into the market and basically explained to people, hey, this is a double shot coffee that's going to have way more effects than your average cup of coffee. It'll give you up to 50% more longevity out of the coffee and you won't have a crash or jitters. And so people started to get, uh, I had no advertising money. yeah. So it was again, just relying on word of mouth, but this managed to go ahead and get a whole bunch of people interested, which was great. And so it also helped a lot of people who could really benefit from it because me- um, mental health and COVID did not go hand in hand. Fuck no. It was a very challenging time. Yeah. So providing something that will be like, hey, here's all the energy and all the performance that you need, but also things will that will also assist with your ability to handle stress because that's what adaptogens do. Yeah. So adapt- yeah, we didn't cover off on adaptogens before. I just realized that Great we didn't. segue. Great segue. <laughs> so, Here we go. <laughs> so adaptogens are, are things like uh, ashwagandha, panax ginseng, rhodiola, mm. rosea, and they're predominantly known as, um, uh, they're predominantly herbs. And adaptogens have the ability to help your body to adapt to situations. So uh, whether it's okay. environmentally, whether it's physically or whether it's nervous system. And okay. it's the adaptation to handle stress and anxiety in a better situation, in a better way. Okay. And so... Physiologically. Exactly. So okay. it can be environmental, it can be physical, it can be uh, emotional, it can be mental. So Because we feel stress through all of these different methods. Yep. And so some stress is very, very good. For example, a hormetic um, stressor is heat or cold exposure or yeah. exercise. And these are things you want to have. Yeah, this is right. good. But then, of course, there's... Um, too much of anything can be quite negative. So then there's like uh, chronic stress can come from constantly being in the state of stress, which is going to cause a lot of negative mental health issues. So when you can combine this, uh, which by the way, not many people are taking these types of products at all. Like I never knew to take anything like this. And so suddenly I'm having something which is now making my brain work more effective, but also I feel more chill and more relaxed. Yeah. So now suddenly if someone cuts me off in traffic, instead of like driving up to them and screaming at them, I'm like, probably just a busy day for them. All good. That and I'm feeling way more chill about stuff. Self and situationalist. I'm the, yeah, I've really battled, particularly, I'm good at just chewing through performance and taking my Vivans and things like that. But you get to an amp level where your performance is amped, but everything is amped. Yeah. You're wired to fight or fight, not flight. Yeah. yeah. And it's and it's not great. So suddenly you're just like, oh, cool. There's a certain type of feeling where I can just feel good and focused and relaxed and, and energetic and calm all at the same wow. time. 
and it's that's the kind of golden place, and they call it flow state. I'm not gonna lie, I have really enjoyed sitting here sipping on this. It's almost finished, and as we go along, I'm getting smarter and calmer, and I'm like <laughs> literally that aware that because I usually very much struggle with recalling um, information at the moment. The body's full of cortisol, so short-term memory recalls like pretty shit, Quite which like is something it. that I've learned. But here, I actually find myself like so in tune to even remembering I'm going to bring up um, uh, adaptogens yep, very good. Right, the, right the way through to even remembering that name. <laughs> which <laughs> is not all, an easy one to remember. And sitting here and just feeling calm and in flow state. And I generally feel stimulated as if I've had a coffee. Yeah. So the idea is you feel like... So we both would feel from just drinking this that we have energy, but... I'm not like, I've, it's not like I've had a double shot coffee where I'm kind of like that nervous energy. Like, All right, cool. I need to go do something. Yeah. yeah I have no urge. Like my, my hand isn't jittery. I'm straight. I'm feeling chill and relaxed, but I'm mentally feeling awake and bright. Yeah. But I don't feel an urge to spur the energy like yeah. you would from a whole bunch of pre-workout or whatever. marketing with that voice, by the way. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> it's good, right? Yeah. Savvy but spur it, the energy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, that whole like a uh, very very kind of relaxed flow state where you feel good and happy and calm all at the same time wrapped up because people think those modalities have to be separate. Yeah. If you have energy and you're energetic, you cannot be calm. W- why not? Well, we need we we used to A plus B equals C. Yeah. I feel tired. I need this. I'm not calm. I need this. I mean, again, love to my friends in the US, but US is everything for an upper, for a downer, and just those variabilities yeah. and the divots in between. It's, you just create these potholes for yourselves, eh? Well, it's also putting everything into a silo. Yep. This is for energy and this is for calm and this is for stress. It's like, whoa, what about the hormetic approach where like, it could potentially be able to do everything at the same time? And that's what we said before. This is for physical health. This is for mental health. Yeah. Emotional health. Don't even start. Get, yeah. a, get a dog. And it's the... Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> like, it's, it's such a shame. And so, I spent so many years fighting with people to basically explain, no, this will, at the same time as making you feel like you have energy, it will also make you feel like you're slightly in a better mood and it will also help you to feel more relaxed and people are just going oh, hang on so you're going to tell me it's going to make you feel good and relaxed and energetic and I'm like well yes that's exactly correct I was going to say and in a pessimistic Australian tool poppy cutting syndrome market you are up against it my friend <laughs> so yeah it, it wasn't easy yeah. um, and uh, we're not near where we need to be at all yet but it's basically it's starting to slowly the biggest thing is the product would work. So I'd just always just be like, just try it, just try it, just try yeah. it, just try it. And um, and once people did, they would always go ahead and change their tune and be like, yeah. oh, hang on, actually, now I kind of know what you mean. I'm like, yes, I know. There's so much science behind it. <gasps> so coming from a background of law, I was a massive nerd. So in 2018 and 19, I uh, put together 512 clinical studies that prove the efficacy of the product. Of course I went did. way overboard. Yeah. So we're one of the most well-researched products in the world. Um, the most in food, but of like anything at all, like with pharmaceuticals, we're like in the top couple, which is insane to think about. But I thought that's what I had to do yeah. because I was like, people aren't going to believe me. So I probably should have just set like a, a line in the sand and be like a hundred bits of proof would be enough, Mark. But this. otherwise I just kept doing more because it's also, I was loving it. So yeah. I'll be researching say ashwagandha. Yep. And so the active ingredients in ashwagandha that make it work are called withanolides. You need a certain amount of withanolides to have a positive benefit upon how that you're going to uh, deal with stress and anxiety, but also it has promotional effects for uh, release of testosterone to energy. You can do all these different things. So, I kicked off with just thinking of it as something that can reduce stress and reduce anxiety. And I learned it does all these other things. There's all these like big studies showing that it does. And so before I know it, I'm fascinated about it for brand new reasons. So yeah. instead of going ahead and finding five or 10 uh, scientific studies that show it works, I found 50 or 60. And then I'm thinking, I want to then use the same amount as all the studies that had the positive effect in the exact, I want to use the exact same concentration, same amount, same herb, same part of the herb, everything the same and put it in my product. And yeah. that was the kind of um, premise I was taking back from the law firm is if it worked for them, it'll probably work again. Got it. And so, but no, a, a lot of places in the Australian market do not take that approach. And that's what I find really annoying. So back to the point about- I was going to say, there's lots of other energy drinks out there and you and I are running through a few. You even told me things like, the stuff that's in here needs to be in a concealed container because things like UV. Very good point. So I I pointed out to um, a person who's a CEO of another nootropics business at a health conference a few years ago. I'm not going to mention the person's name. We better not do that. (laughs) Or the the product. But at the time, their drink was in a a clear glass bottle. And I mentioned, hey, you got a couple of... But it's glass. It's healthy. 
Yeah, it was also <laughs> just it was. Yeah, it, and yeah, the guy was refusing to uh, listen to me at the time, but he took my advice because the next time I saw it was fully wrapped. And what I'd said is, you got a few B vitamins in here. Did you know that B vitamins are UV sensitive? And then he just goes, "What does that mean?" I'm like, "As in light, which is what we'll get in here because it is a clear glass bottle, is going to negatively affect." your B vitamins. So therefore, after a certain amount of time, they're not really going to work anymore. Yeah, wow. And Even so, though they're in a sealed bottle. Exactly. Know. Just because they're UV sensitive, the UV is literally going to break them down until yeah, they no wow. longer really work or exist. And they'll have no benefit for the humans anymore. Okay. So the person was a bit like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the next time I... He obviously did some research. He listened to me. And the next time I saw the product, it was all in fully wrapped glass bottles. And Get I it. was like, hey. hey, hey. So that's why we went with um, uh, with cans because... You're also saying about, yeah, no UV, but you're also saying cans versus glass. So for the environment. So we so how Australia used to do a lot of recycling with glass is uh, China used to buy a large amount of our, of our glass and recycle it because they have way more infrastructure to effectively recycle glass. Yeah. We don't have a particularly good system with recycling glass. We have a pretty good system with recycling aluminium. So it also takes way less resources and way less energy to create aluminium than it does to create glass. Oh. Uh, also, aluminium has an endless recyclable life. Glass does not. You can only recycle glass about five to seven times before it becomes a waste. So with our current technology, this Got might it. change in the future. Uh-huh. So these are the... Uh, and and this might be outdated information now. This is the information I made for the decision a few years ago. And it was for those reasons that I switched into aluminium. Because the very first savvy was in glass bottle. I love it. Honestly, I already love how it is. But I love that all of the background research that goes into this, if coffee pods, all that in between, it can actually make people feel good about <laughs> the end-to-end process of a product. You don't often find that. Because there's all yeah. these little shortcuts you can make to just earn that little bit of extra profit. Well, yeah, you can definitely make these shortcuts and, and do it in that way. But I just kind of thought, wouldn't it be nice for people to know that, hey, we went to the effort of trying to find specific uh, farms. And so the place that actually grows the ingredients that are in here, it's sustainable farm, it's fair trade, it's actually an organic product. And so, and when we went over here and actually it, did it correctly. It's in Australia. Yeah. So, every, so oh, all, not not everything. Not everything. Okay. So we have like um, a, um native Australian wild kakadu plum in here, which is oh, great. Cool. Yeah. So we have some really good high quality Australian ingredients. But some of the ingredients, um, we get them from the place that they're naturally grown. And so, so for Ayurvedic medicines, which is Indian, um, oh, wow. a lot of them are coming out of northern Africa and India. That's hectic. Um, we're using ancient Chinese herbal medicine, like things like Panax ginseng. Oh yeah. And so that comes from China yeah, or wow. from Korea. And so um, it's that whole approach. Jeez, of, there's so much in my little can, eh? Yeah, there's nine grams of stuff. But just all of the logistics as well uh, as the efficacy there. It's a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it took a long amount of time, which is probably why when I went out to this place, it's probably about 32 no's because people yeah. would go ahead and think about this stuff because I wasn't thinking that far ahead. And they'd be like, hang on, mate, your supply chain sounds disgusting. Yeah. Get out. Um, <laughs> and so, <laughs> which is basically what happened. Like, All right, sweet. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. Um, and then, so we made the, we made the um, coffee pods and that ended up being a brand new business model we didn't even expect. And that helped a lot of people. And that was really, really good because when people would have them, be like, oh, dude, like, I can't go back to drinking regular coffee having had yours yeah, because amazing. I'm loving the effects of, I now have coffee that tastes delicious and it tastes like coffee, but now I'm having all these additional benefits. And for a lot of people... Coffee is a performance enhancer. Hundred percent. A lot of people. Most people can't function without one in the morning. There's that uh, that dependent on it. Exactly, and so if you can make that function better and take away the downsides, like wouldn't that be a game changer? Sounds and like that's him. that's basically what we started to try and push out, and then that was great. But un- heavily hampered by advertising, like if we had a few extra bucks, or if we're taking the time to go ahead and be like, I got a cool idea, I'm going to get some investors. Yeah. We would probably be in every single store across Australia right now. Because yeah, wow. people would, would be like, great, this is cool. Like, I love the effects. It works. It's cool. And now the marketing dollars would help it go out there. We had no marketing dollars. So everything yeah. we're doing is all word of mouth. And well, so word suddenly- Word of mouth is king. And all I know is. is communities and communities. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to have you on this, mate. Like this is- the sort of product we want to get out and about to the veteran community, get people off those, you know, big energy drinks and those straight up coffees. I think you were even telling me about coffee itself. You know, the thing I've recently learned about 
organics and tap water and all the rest yeah. is like the amount of chemicals yeah. that actually go into that and how our body stores that and the stress it provides. And I've co- noticed that you have a, a filtration system for the water, which I like. I know. So I only started, I had my own mental health crash about four weeks ago now. And before then, I was so doped up, up on cortisol that I couldn't tell the difference between tap water and filtered water. You're right. Literally, my taste buds were shot. Even my, um, you know, smell, a bit cal- what am I saying? Even my um, smell, sense of smell, yep. like wearing colognes and stuff, I found it so difficult to even distinguish between them. I was just on this, you know, jacked up crash that finally came. And um, even the chemicals and stuff that go to in our food. But you were telling me about how uh, over, um, not overproduced, over sprayed and everything else um, so coffee actually is. Yeah, so coffee. For those who don't know, coffee is the most heavily sprayed crop in the world. Wow. Uh, with herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, insecticides. Also, by the way, I know we've mentioned a lot of facts, so I please invite everyone to take a moment to actually fact check me. Get it, fact check. Um, because, yeah, I, I'm more than happy to. And, and if you find I'm wrong, please reach out to me because yeah. I'm going to update my We'll put stuff. it in the notes. At the end of this, we'll ask people, we'll let people know how they get in contact with you. But I love that. Yeah. You yeah. Will. Some of these people, mate, you should see some of the emails I get. They're oh, on it. No, no, no. But I, I love this. Like, because I, I want to learn, I want to improve. And if I'm wrong about something, then great. Please correct me. Get it. I think it's, it's a. I have a forever desire to keep learning and learning yeah. and learning. And information will always change. Yeah. So you cannot say the same thing uh, year in, year out because science will develop, things will change, and what was right will become wrong. And that's the kind of circle that we have to go with. Yeah, I love so it. tea and coffee are the most heavily spread crops. Um, coffee especially with herbicides, pesticides, and fungicides, insecticides. And so they're grown often in areas that have art- huge amounts of artificial soil. Oh, yeah. Sorry, an no, artificial fertilizer to help them to grow faster. And sometimes they're even genetically modified so they can grow in fields instead of growing in forests like they're meant to. Oh, wow. And so there's a large issue whereby if you're not having organic coffee, and 97% of the world's supply of coffee is not organic, it's conventional, which yeah, means right. it's heavily spread with these chemicals. Now, you might go ahead and find a strawberry, raspberry, whatever, in Australia and go ahead and get it tested and be like, hey, this is conventional strawberry. I wonder what's the residue of the potential harmful chemicals on it. And you might find 5, 10, 15 chemicals. But you might go ahead and do the same thing with some coffee samples and find upwards of 100. Wow. Now, you might find some which have means that heavily sprayed that have maybe 50 to 100. You might find others that have several hundred. And this is the data that I basically started going into. And that's what I, was, what I was trying to push for people about why I've chosen organic coffee. Yeah. And so I actually wrote a PR release, um, which got taken up by a bunch of places and then all got dumped within a week, probably because I was rattling potentially a few too many trees. Big money. And yeah, so basically I wasn't trying to scare the producers out of people. I was just trying to suggest that in Australia, 99% of the supply of coffee is from overseas. It's we have about one percent of our own domestically grown coffee. Nine yeah, percent wow. of it's important. Ninety-seven percent of the world's supply of coffee is conventional, which means three percent is organic. Okay. So a lot of the coffee that we actually have in circulation is therefore not organic, and yeah. therefore it will have those large amounts of chemicals and herbicides and pet. And I just think it's important for people to know that because education is power, and if people. Uh, going into the supermarkets and trying to buy organic fruits and organic vegetables thinking they're doing their body a hell of a favour but they're having three or four cups of coffee a day with <sighs> hundreds of chemicals they don't realise they're Jeez, having yeah just one small thing can sabotage the whole system yeah and that's what they don't realise and that's the part that I was like this is something that people need to know about like it's pretty unfair that you go ahead and you have these people who are avoiding eating conventionally grown apples and oranges and all this jazz so they can avoid a few chemicals here and there but then they'll go ahead and have those teas and those coffees and they are just getting so many more chemicals than it would have otherwise yeah, right. and they don't realise that that's happening and that tiny change of just getting organic coffee and organic tea yeah. would have saved that so, so where I, do you get your coffee from? so I uh, oh gosh um, I sound like a snob I only, I only have the coffee that I, I have for the business or even have the coffee no the I mean house. as in the, the, so the coffee that goes in the coffee pods oh yes 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 no, so the, not, not you personally <laughs> <laughs> which I assume is what you do personally yeah, yeah. So there's um, actually a group on the Gold Coast called Coffee Roasters Australia. Okay. So we work with them. So they are amazing. Um, so they import green beans from all over the world. Um, also they have uh, Australian coffee as well. Yep. And so the main thing with the Savvy thing is because we're adding in vitamins adaptogens and nootropics which inherently taste pretty awful and we're trying to combine them with coffee and not make it taste bad so we had to trial so many different types of coffee from all around the world yeah wow. we eventually found that uh, a, a blend from honduras papua new guinea and uganda 
appeared to... You love making these logistics difficult, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> this is just headache after headache. But I mean, hey, Three the proof's in the pudding. Continents. Yeah. Um, but that, weirdly enough, seemed to mask the, the unpleasant notes of... Are these all in the Southern Hemisphere too? Uh, uh, yes, they are. Yeah, yes. I love this. Yeah, sorry. Southern Hemisphere coffee. Get it? Yeah, okay. yeah sorry. I've never actually thought about it that way. I was yeah, like, hang on. There yeah, you yeah, go. Yep. Um, but yeah, so, like, so the coffee pods that... Um, if you give them a try, it should taste exactly like regular coffee. We've done two separate trials with the University of New South Wales, whereby we got a whole bunch of different students to try them and we asked them two separate questions. One of them was about taste, one of them was about performance. And so long story short, we found out that eight out of 10 people prefer the taste of our coffee as opposed to Nespresso or Law, which is great. So now the taste is good, but also the effects are way, way better. Can you publish that? Um, well, because it's a, a rudimentary... Yeah, okay. Uh, so not, not rudimentary, sorry. It's a very um, ad hoc, yeah, random... On. Yeah, so... I could try and put something together. Oh, people like that will come after you. No point. You could just say it on my podcast and it's sweet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I, I can go ahead and talk, talk about it and like um, mention that it was done in a very colloquial study yeah, got manner. It. But we tried to be as scientific as we could. Like we did like double blind placebo control. So, yeah, right. uh, so say you were to come in, what, what we would have done is made you a, uh, a coffee in a, in, we made you two coffees in a blank tub and would have told you you're either going to get law, Nespresso or Savvy and you have no idea. And yeah. all I want you to do is sniff it, smell it and have a small taste and tell me what your preferred one is. I don't care about why, you just tell me which one you like the most. Yeah. And so I'm only going to give you um, two options and, and you might get Nespresso and law. You might get um, two Savvies. You have no idea what you're getting. Yeah, right. Um, it's full magician. Um, <laughs> and so the idea is I just want to work out what taste and so whenever there was Savvy versus the other that's the ones we care about we have to throw a whole bunch of red herrings in there yeah, got it. just okay. to kind of not skew the data you have to have some, have some controls yeah. and then we would then text people uh, 45 minutes afterwards um, but then they were given a coffee at random and we'd be like this could be a regular coffee it could be Nespresso Law or Savvy we have no idea drink the coffee we'll text you in 45 minutes we're going to ask you a simple question do you feel that you've just had a regular coffee or have you had something more? And if you do feel like you've had something more, what's giving you this indication? And that was the only question. So they're like, oh, okay, cool, I'm excited. And so what we found really funny, so we're doing 200 different students. Um, and students, by the way, doesn't mean kids. It's like some of the students yeah. are mature age students, like half the people are older than me. Um, and what we found really interesting is people would respond by saying, um, yes, it, it was really, really good. And of that group, those were the group um, that actually had just regular coffee. And so I found out that about 20% of people who had had a regular coffee told, um, wrote back to us saying, oh, it's an amazing, I feel really, really good. And we're going, oh, we didn't tell them they're wrong. We just found it interesting that placebos obviously work. Yeah. So 20% of the respondents um, found an effect when there wasn't an effect. However, people who actually had savvy coffee, um, in the first experiment, it was 80-something percent. In the second experiment, it was 90-something percent. So an average is about 9 out of 10. People who had a savvy coffee, even just having one and one only, could recognize that they've had something that's more than just coffee. Okay. And the effects were very, very different for different people, which is great. Some people talk about, I have a sense of clarity. Normally, when I have coffee, I feel a bit jittery and fuzzy. Yep. Others were just going, oh, I just felt good for way, way longer. All the different things that we're actually scientifically trying to showcase, and now it's all coming through. I could have cried. Like, um, yeah, getting it. all these results and being like, oh my God, this is actually cool. It shows that it works. So that was... I love that you get yourself out of that echo chamber as well. So it's so yeah. interesting for others just to, you know, I know I have a good product and just to keep reinforcing it, but you're actually doing that such variable studied approach as well. That's brilliant. Well, I, I You're such an overachiever. I hope your older sister is like listening to this going, oh, geez, I need to help my auntie a bit more. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> if so, sorry, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not sorry. But um, it, was, it was a really cool thing to do, but it was the, the, only, the cheapest way I could do it. I tried to reach out to the CSIRO to apply for a grant so I could actually get a proper study done. Oh, yeah. Like one that I could publish. Yeah. And long story short, they said no. And so I'm like, that's so cool. So many no's in this conversation. Yeah, I know. It's a bit of a story of a, a desperate guy trying to find validation. I love it. Um, so eventually I was like, all right, cool. How do I check if this works? What could I do? And at the time I had an intern who worked in the Tea and Coffee Society of New, um, in Society of New South Wales University. Let me try that sentence again. 
She uh, was a science student at the University of New South Wales and she was in the Tea and Coffee Society, which I didn't think There's was a, a thing. There's a Tea and Coffee Society? I didn't think it was a thing. It is a thing. Is this like with teddy bears and high tea? and? Uh, I, I think it's just people who just love having tea and coffee. I love that. Good and, on them. Good and on them. all different types of coffees from around the world. So like some people, like, you know, some people like what wines and stuff. Yeah, okay. There's a whole bunch of people who just love teas from all around the world and coffees. And I was like, cool. W- what a weird and wonderful way to do it. Let's, let's rock. So I, the one day kind of hit me, I'm like, ooh, could, could I use you guys to, to run a trial? And then they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm gonna give you lots of coffee machines and lots of coffee, I'm gonna buy everything. So I can get a whole experiment basically done for under a thousand bucks. And so, and then I can have the result. I don't think any medical journals will be interested in my publication, but it's just very, very good to know and have some kind of data to showcase that everything we've been wanting to do isn't just theory based because yeah. the studies show that we're gonna get results. And I've seen enough people get results, but I want to see what happens when I just throw it out there to a whole bunch of randoms who have no care about what's going to happen. Yeah, right. And then when you see results staring back at nine out of 10 people are saying, this is this is good. Yeah. Then you're like going, this is undeniable. Like yeah, this, I, love it. I have to keep pumping here. So you got all excited. COVID is now finished. We're getting the drinks back out. We made, uh, in 2021, we made drink version two. We made 120,000 drinks, um, 60,000 of each flavor. So we're finally starting to get a little bit of scale. Yeah, nice. Uh, Managed to sell through them, which was great. And then major feedback that we had there was, uh, I think my favorite bit of feedback was this one guy who was uh, buying it for his office and going through quite a lot of it. And so I assumed he loved it. And I reached out to him one time just going, hey, just wanted to say thanks so much for being such a a big fan and supporter. Would you mind if I asked, um, what's the main reason that you really like this this product? Because you're always going through it. And he just goes, mate, if I'm honest, I hate the taste. I hold my nose and I scull it. There is nothing else out there that provides me that amount of productivity as drinking your drink. If I don't have your drink, I do not feel as productive as I could be. Wow. And so I was so stoked, but also slightly offended at the same time. Well, I mean, good. He endured it. Good on him. Wow. He liked the benefits, but the fact that he didn't like the taste so much that he had to hold his nose and skull. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm not doing a very good job masking all these ingredients. And I fully understand that because it tasted good, not great. It was kind of like a Barocca at the time. Okay. Which isn't bad, but it's not, you don't celebrate that taste. I look forward to it. Like, that's delicious. Exactly. So, this is the development of it. Okay. So, at that time, um, so people would have it and then I'd tell them about the benefits. They get all excited. They think it's going to taste like Coke, Pepsi, Fanta. And they're like, they want a, a yummy drink. And they go, oh, it's a, it's a six or a seven out of 10 on flavor. Yeah. But hey, the benefits are really good. I'm like, that's great. So, you love the benefits. Like, you're going to keep going, right? And then some people would literally be so, care so much about the way things taste. They'd be like, look, I love it. But just, I'm not going to drink it again because I just love the taste of Red Bull so much more. Yeah, Even though it's not nearly as good, I'm going to drink that. I'm like, and in my head, I'm just kind of going, that's illogical. What the fuck? Like, why would you? <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't get it. But yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. So if I just got the taste better, would you make the switch? And I'm like, 100%. Like, I want what you're having, but just it's got to taste good if I'm having it. Yeah, daily. good. Okay. And I'm, like, and I'm like, all right, cool. So Australians just need it to taste like super delicious but not have sugar and be healthy all at the same time. I'm like, this has got six calories in it, doesn't it? It's got, yeah, uh, 5.9 calories, zero sugar. Um, and it's literally imitating a drink that should have 30 or 40 grams of I sugar. Say, it tastes very sweet. Yeah, it's, it's hard to, this took so much time. So massive shout out to the actual um, food techs I work with to get this done. Yeah. There was a small army of them to try and get it right. Um, Love that. There was a lot of people who... Especially w- to get it like naturally right as opposed to all the other preservatives people put in stuff. Yeah, so that was another issue as well at the beginning is trying to get it um, in, done in a natural way. Yeah, I, had, stevia. I had some places that would just say, sorry, mate, just this can't be done. Like yeah, wow. you'll need to use sucralose, you'll need to use acephalene uh, potassium, you'll need to... And I'm like, no thanks, not using them. And they'll be like, oh, well, okay, well, what could you do? And so stevia, for those of you who don't know, um, and a lot of people write it off already thinking, oh, stevia, are oh, gross. No. Yeah. So stevia is like a, a, a wine. So you can have really low quality stevia at like 30%, which is the stuff that a lot of the larger companies use because it's so bloody cheap. Yeah. However, it tastes crap because it's got a bad aftertaste. Yeah. So that's like having cheap wine. So imagine like your cheap cask wine. We'll yeah. go ahead and call that the low quality the old stevia. The bag. Yep. Yeah, the goon bag. Yeah. Goon of fortune, all that jazz. Yes. So that's the way that a lot of people are introduced to stevia, thinking, ugh, stevia has a bad aftertaste. They don't like it. Because what I love is people will have a look and go, oh, it's got stevia in here. And they drink it and they go, 
I don't taste it. Normally I taste stevia, but this tastes good. Yeah, I wouldn't have picked it. And so, because you can have really, really high quality stevia on the other side, kind of like the Penfold. So the expensive bottle of wine is expensive stevia. Yeah. So I'm paying way, way, way more per kilo for this expensive stevia, but it's 99% pure. Oh, wow. It's an organic stevia, and it's one Again. that's... Or uh. this 99% pure white powder that is stevia. <laughs> <laughs> you are just in the other flip side of the scale. I love it. Yeah, it's kind of... Yeah, so at a conference recently, they were calling me the Nootropics dealer. Yeah, it sounds and, uh, like it. That's and, a perfect nickname. And I think it was because I was talking about like, uh, everything and there's like this granular scientific like detail and they're kind of just going, it's a lot of... What like what a drug style chat here? Yeah, yeah. and I'm going to give a healthy kinds, and they're like you're a bit of like a maybe like we'll call you the new tropics dealer. That is and a I'm great like, nickname. You need to get a hat or a shirt or something. Yeah, so actually that was kind of cool, but um, I was trying to work out whether it had like enough negative connotations that it could be kind of good or bad. I've no idea, uh, but I it's know. I think it's a fun one to go with. But yeah. um, so that's why we can create something that actually tastes good. Got it. But um. Yeah, so this is version three now. So version, version three, three, when we got this out. So the three separate flavors, um, I spoke to the audience of current customers and just said, hey, third flavor, what do you want? Yeah. I'll make whatever the hell you guys want because it's not a drink for me anymore. It's a drink for what you guys want. So Better. my preconceived notions of I like this flavor, don't care. Um, and enough people repeatedly were saying, orange and mango, and we love passion fruit, and this, and this, this. And so eventually passion fruit won. Yeah, and so I was like, "Great, passion fruit it is." Who are so these people? I'm just not part of this passion fruit club, but you've done an amazing job. Lemon lime, there has to be lemon lime. So I love you've done that. Yeah, so that one tastes a bit like solo or lift. The passion fruit tastes a bit like passiona, and the uh, mixed berry tastes a, uh, like a delicious uh, kind of raspberry soda. Get it? Um, I got that one to try. My mum literally went and stole one, and I'm looking at it in her <laughs> slipper that she's going to take home. <laughs> I can't believe you won her over so quickly. Hey, Mike, I quickly want to jump into you yourself because outside of Savvy, you're obviously a very high-performing individual and I apologise for those listening in. We are sitting out on my balcony uh, in Burley because it's such a beautiful backdrop with the ocean behind us, but there are the occasional sirens going on given it is the Gold Coast, so that's what you're hearing in the background. This is my first time doing a podcast in this spot, so thank you for All right. joining me at it. Yeah, I really like it. I just really wanted that. We're talking a bit of mental health. That I literally wake up, the sun comes up over the horizon and goes straight into my bedroom and wakes me up the natural way we were made to. So That's such a good way to get up. But so you yourself, mate, you're a very, very high performer. Um, I mean, coming from the legal side of the house through to, you know, everything you've done as the um, Nootropics dealer, what what else do you do outside of this? Because you, you're a member of a board here and you speak as a fellow here. And um, what else is going on? Because you're actually going to come out to the Veteran Games when we do it. Yes. And people are going to have access you to again. you and your Very brain. Excited. No, thank you. We're going to have Savvy on board. We'll tell you more about that at the end. But what else do you do in your life? And what is just a quick part of your own personal routine to help you with this high-performance lifestyle? So I find I work more now and I'm more productive now than I was working as a lawyer when I was working outrageous amounts of hours because I've just looked more into self-optimization in every single way, shape or form. So now I think I've got a pretty solid idea upon the right type of things to put in my body to get the ultimate results out yeah. uh, physically, mentally and emotionally. Um, and now it's kind of thinking, what else can I do? Lifestyle practices are going to get me in the best possible focus. Yeah. So for today, um, as an easy example, I got up uh, not super early, but a little bit early. And then first thing I kind of do is I like to try and... I, I don't know if um, people are, are into this, but I like to try and do some very light form of exercise straight away, like the second I get up. Yeah, well. So kind of like roll out of bed and then uh, I used to do it uh, there but then I get like yelled at by my partner so I have to go downstairs and so then normally while the coffee um, is being made I'll go ahead and do some uh, push up basically burpees yeah. so just um, jump squats with push ups and yeah. the idea is just to try and do something and then I've just made a delicious coffee normally what I'll do is I'll chuck as it as in, in a savvy coffee pot or it's a savvy coffee pot and then yeah. I'll put it in the milk frother with a little bit of coconut milk and a little bit of cacao wow get and it and so healthy no, and a tiny bit of cinnamon as well so it's delicious it's nice and it's good and the idea is what I'm doing is training myself like Pavlov's dog and so that's my go-to thing now I put that up in the office and I want that but to earn that four minutes of cold shower and oh, so wow, okay. sun's not up yet which means things are cold and so in winter it's quite chilly yeah. so Outside air temperature is probably like six degrees, which means the pipes that are being cooled down overnight. This is in Byron? Yeah. Okay. So it'd be way colder in other states. Yeah, um, got it. But yeah, so a bit chilly. 
And then, um, but you just got to force yourself to, to like it. So I'll have a cold shower and at the start, the best way to, for people who want to get into a cold shower is have a regular shower and the last 10 seconds, just um, turn the whole hot, top, hot tap off and just have cold for the first 10 seconds. Yeah. And that's a challenge. And then for the next, uh, next time you can do that, do 15, 20 seconds. Yeah, Great, like cool. And then maybe try and uh, chuck a banger on um, for like a cool song that you like and then have your shower. A and banger. Then <laughs> <laughs> well, I have not heard that for a while. Chuck a banger on. <laughs> it's the show, what's, yeah. a, what's a banger? What's your go-to banger, mate? Oof. Uh, depends what mood I'm in. I, I switch from so many different types of music. What did you play this morning? Um, this morning at my gym was... Uh, oh, um, it was actually rap this morning. Oh, wow. I wouldn't have picked that. Um, I don't know why. It was just that was in the, was in the mood for. Okay, gotcha. Um, so chuck a banger on and then... So that's a great way to kind of get into it. But because yeah, okay. uh, this morning, yeah, it's it's before five and I don't want to wake my cell, so wake neighbours or my partner. So I'm just doing it just uh, silence. But a good way to do it is have music to kind of pump yourself up and end a regular shower with cold water and just kind of make that length of cold water more and more and more until eventually it's the entire shower yeah wow and that's a great way to to get yourself into it and if you read a book by wim hoff um called the ice man yeah. he explains all these amazing benefits of cold exposure that, do you do any breath work before you do your cold shower so if i'm doing uh so yes well uh that was the idea of the exercise so uh, i'm explaining okay. this terribly no no you're good so what i'll tend to do is i've i've gotten up i've gone downstairs i've popped on the coffee machine and then I, I'm doing a whole bunch of um, push-ups and jump squats. And then it will be a huge amount of really fast breathing, almost kind of like fire breathing if people are familiar with that yeah. with Wim Hof. Stomp, stomach breathing? Yes. Yeah, cool. So kind of... <laughs> so fast sips of air, never properly allowing yourself to um, fully exhale and you're just trying to constantly, really forcefully breathe in, almost like your lungs are getting a workout because you're trying to do it so fast. And then again, it's fully exhale and then a huge amount of um, jump squats with push-ups with no breathing at all. Oh, wow. Um, and then just basic small things like... that CO2. And that's the whole okay. idea. Yep. Is just to go ahead and just kind of um, totally uh, change that... Um, level of gas that naturally will exist and so then from there into cold immersion therapy just via a cold shower i will allow the head um the cold water as much as possible to try and hit the cranial part of my head to the crown of my head yeah that's where the vagus nerve is and the vagus nerve endings and that's the longest cranial nerve you'll have in your body which is responsible for a huge amount of different positive benefits from all the way from mood to uh, dealing with stress in a slightly better way, but also will wake you the hell up. Yeah, right. And it does it in a really good way. Other ways to uh, stimulate vagal nerve tone is gargling, singing, uh, humming. Um, ah, the yogi's got it. Yeah, so I've forgotten um, what else um, there is. But if, if anyone's ever like, kind of like just, I don't know, there might be a song on a bit of a banger in the car and, um, and you're singing along and you're kind of just going... Oh, and after you're singing, you feel better. Or you've gone to karaoke or whatever, and you feel better afterwards. Or maybe yeah. you're just chanting at the footy game with your Do mates. Do you karaoke? I've, I've been known to karaoke. <laughs> of course you have. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But say, even if you just, um, you're down, at the, um, down watching your mates play footy and you're screaming the sidelines, yeah. afterwards you'll notice you feel better. Yeah, yeah. And it's literally just because by the act of singing or doing something, you're stimulating vagal nerve tone, and that's a really good thing for your body. Wow, okay. And so another way to do Put it is... Put your head in that cold shower. Got it. Yeah, so um, so you're basically a little bit um, like kind of looking downwards and basically primary amount of our water is just kind of hitting the crown of your head. Yeah, got and it. so goal is, couple couple minutes is goal is is great. Uh, you'll get benefits from as little as 30 to 60 seconds. Well, what I love about you explaining this sort of stuff is so many people, like I have friends who wake up every morning, shout out to old Andrew Papp out there, who will just jump in a cold bath and just sell ice bath and just sit there for minutes and minutes. I hate it. I have recently oh, yeah, started doing the, I do the cold shower at the end of a beautiful warm shower. Yep. And you can hear me huffing and puffing <laughs> like I'm trying to blow out everyone else's birthday um, cake candles. <laughs> but by the end of it, I feel great. But I'm just not someone who can crash into it. And it's so, particularly four weeks into my uh, you know, rebound, doing things like that, I'm shocking at meditating because everyone yeah. else is doing... 20, 30 minute meditations, but jumping in and doing a three minute meditation, all these that will still have chunks. benefits. Yeah. yeah, and that's what you've been explaining. Bite sized chunks start small and then increase from there. So it's just because it's the way that I learn how to do it for myself. Because no one, no one one day just goes, "Oh, hang on, I think I know what I want to do." 
that zero degree tub of water. I want to sit in that for five minutes. <laughs> but no, no one's doing that. So, yeah. and, and, and anyone who wants to be a bit of a hero who's looking at that going, this is what I do every day. No, you started somewhere. Yeah, so yeah. Just, just tell people how you started. Yeah. Like um, no one likes the idea of a cold shower because we're, we're brought up to not like that. Yeah, very true. And therefore we try and limit cold exposure thinking cold equals bad. Oh no, if I get too chilly out when I'm playing footy in the rain, I might get a cold. Get a cold. Yep. Why? Why would you get a virus from getting like cold exposure? Um, it makes zero sense. Again, geez. preconceived notion questioned and realized this makes no sense. So you don't get a cold just from being cold? No. Oh my goodness. I know. Dun, dun, dun. Mind blown. Because what a common cold is actually has this fancy name of virus and I've forgotten the name off the top of my head, which is annoying me. Oh my goodness. I know. We've got him. I know. We've got him. That's right. You've done a magnificent job until then and I'm sure someone will fact check us there. So Yeah, yeah. Well, if I got, I'd rather like it's to say I don't know. No. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, but yeah, so... So have you so cold exposure in the morning? That's really good. Then um, I'll have the uh, then I'll have coffee and then I'll hit the gym and then and you've earned that coffee. Yes, and I, I've earned <laughs> it because I've had the cold exposure. But what's kind of cool is by doing that Pavlov's dog technique, I find it works really well for me because it creates this idea of well, I want that nice warm coffee and I want to go to the gym. But what stands before me is this challenge of a shower, of a cold shower, and I make it a bit of a fun challenge. I don't put it up on a pedestal. I get myself be like, I can't wait for this. And I think about how good I'm going to feel after the cold shower. Yeah. So the second I turn that on, um, that tap, and it's like, oh, instead of like having that like reaction of negative, I'm like, I pretend it's a really good thing. Uh, I'm no. like, oh, this is so nice. I love this. He's Mr. Mindset over here. So if, if anyone's ever seen... Um, uh, Pumping Iron by Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know how like he's, he's doing those. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming in the gym. I'm yeah. coming at home. But for a lot of people, that uh, feeling of muscular fatigue is actually really unpleasant. But he's changed his belief and mindset to be like, I love that feeling so much and what it represents, which for a lot of people is a negative feeling. So I thought, great ideation. So if I can take that idea and move it across, I can now try and take things which are unpleasant and make them yeah. seem pleasant. And... It doesn't work 100% of the time, but it's good enough to go ahead and get things done. And that's the whole idea is just, I wanted to have a whole bunch of different things that are going to wake me the hell up. And those are some practices for me. Then hit you're, the also, gym. you're also creating a dopamine loop for yourself in that sense of achievement in earning that coffee. That's exactly it, correct. Yeah. Which is the Pavlov's dog um, yeah, got idea. It. Okay. So I just had to dumb it down for myself. <laughs> no, no, no. But, al but also that cold exposure is going to elevate um, dopamine by a huge amount. Yeah, got it. So okay. people who love cold exposure will realize that you can have a three times dopamine um, amount, so 300% more dopamine yeah. just from cold exposure for a couple minutes. So what I'm trying to do is basically pump up my body with large amounts of uh, dopamine before I even have any kind of caffeine or anything else in my system. Love that. So when I'm at the gym, I'm or operating at full potential. Uh, on the way to the gym, it's a few minute drive. I will chuck an ice pack down my pants. <laughs> <laughs> so I did not see that coming. I love you just for those who aren't watching this, you can actually watch this podcast if you're just listening to it. At that point, Mark just sat up and turned to me and looked at me square in the eyes and said, "I put a ice pack down my pants." So, so for those I who did not expect that, but so talk us through it. So for those who have the front of the pants, yeah, the front of the, so I, I I sit it right over the boys, um, and so the idea is. The testes are intended to be away from the body for the purpose of cooling down. Yep. Now, most people tend to wear uh, briefs, boxes, whatever. And unfortunately, just from sitting down as well, they're going to be quite snug to the body, which means they're going to get heated up by the body, which means the whole idea of why nature intended they stay away, stay away from the body is to get a degree or two cooler. Yeah. And now we're stopping that process. So... Any time that you can go ahead and cool them down is going to be a great thing. Also, the testes are responsible for the uh, uh, for testosterone production. Now, I'm trying to remember the name of the exact part, but I've again, it's evaded me for the moment. I don't want to go ahead and mispronounce it. But effectively, what you're doing is um, creating vasoconstriction around that area. So then once you're going ahead and you're working out, there'll be a huge amount of vasodilation. And the part of the testes that effectively is responsible for creation of testosterone you've now kind of subdued that so now once it um goes back to normal when you're doing vasodilating exercises i.e a whole bunch of push-ups sit-ups chin-ups etc at the gym now you're kind of blasting that process a bit more so you'll actually it's a great way to increase testosterone naturally this is fascinating tell me so there's a guy called lucas owen um okay. who 
is a mate of mine. Um, that's L U C A S and A O U N. I think oh, his wow. name is just filled with vowels. Okay. Um, and so <laughs> he will. T- he he calls himself. If you've ever heard of like the knees over toes guy, he's the ice over balls guy. Oh wow! Is that your girlfriend? Yes. Or fiance? Yes, fiance now. What did she do when she first saw you putting an ice pack down your pants on the way to the gym? Uh, was there a precursor to it, or did she just catch you in the act? She saw me one time doing it because um, there's an ice pack in the freezer. Or there's two ice packs in the freezer oh. that have big red X's <laughs> over them. And they and they have their own part in the freezer. They're not allowed to be in anything else. She's quarantined my ice packs. And like for good reason. So they're on their own shelf by themselves in the back right corner. And I wash them before and after use and stuff. Like I'm not an animal. But nonetheless. I'm obsessed. Can you please? <laughs> all right. Right here and now. We're going to go through where people can find Savvy and buy it on your website and all that. You have to develop a signature man ice pack. Oh, they, they exist. Oh, God. Like, so, like, uh, I forget what they're called. I think they're called, like, um, S- Snowy Whites or something. Or there's... Oh. Uh, or, or Chili... Or Chili... Uh, I can't remember what they're called. Oh. But there's... there's th- These type of concept already exist because this is the thing. This has been... This has been spoken about. They've, they've looked into it. And this actually is a positive thing to have. So... Fascinating. It's it's bonkers, right? But um, you want to do this before the gym, not after. You want to have your cold showers before the gym, not after, because having cold exposure after exercising will reduce the amount of uh, growth hormone and testosterone produced by that uplift of exercise. So for people who like cold showers, have them before the exercise, not after. This is so fascinating. I've learned so much. So because there's this place in Byron that I go to, and it's called Social Remedy, and I'll go to it. Um, from time to time I actually go to a different gym but this place has a whole bunch of different ice baths and has a sauna and stuff Yeah, yeah. and there's a lot of dudes who'll come in um, uh, and jump in the ice bath and stuff and then like they'll be in the sauna afterwards hot cold yeah yeah and it's a big big, big sauna and stuff and so like someone you hear the conversations oh you just finished like a big workout I'm thinking mate if you finish a big workout what the fuck are you doing getting in a, in a bat in a ice bath yeah like should you just do heat after a big workout yes Jeez Louise. So, I'm one of those guys, by the way, who goes a big workout and goes through some hot, cold therapy. So thanks for smashing that. No, no, no. As no. Well. At least just for the first like um, hour or so, try and avoid the cold because the cold will suppress the release of growth hormone and the release of testosterone, which is what you want to have elevated post-workout. Right. That's going to allow for faster recovery, more feelings of strength, power, etc., and yeah. also all of the other benefits from exercise through a massive increase in uh, different neurotransmitters through to just generally just feeling a little bit more kind of chill because there's more um oh god i've forgotten the name don't worry you have been on such a roll um i'm just milking your brain for all this information oh my gosh i've I've actually just forgotten the name of it. Anyway, sorry. I was trying to go ahead and mention another neurotransmitter but for some reason my i'm having a bit of a brain fart so we're moving forward another savvy (laughs) potentially that could be maybe it's maxed out and so uh Endorphins. Why was I? Why was oh, I, I could have even known that one. Oh, I know where was my head at. So That's yeah, right. so it'll it'll suppress all of that, and you don't want to have that suppressed. You want them to be elevated after the gym. Yeah. So okay, good so to then know. I'll, go, I'll go home and have like a regular shower, kind of like lukewarm, which I don't like it to be too hot. Um, and then I will. Uh, the night before, I'll normally do all my goals and stuff for the next morning, and then at this stage after the this um, shower post gym. I will then go ahead and actually relook at all my goals for the day and I'll reorder them based upon priority of how they should be. Yeah. And so giving myself a second chance to go ahead and look at things and then I'll go ahead and do my uh, meditation and breathing practice for that day. And that process can take anywhere from five or 10 or 15 minutes. It's totally just up to me and how I'm feeling that morning. Okay. And so the thing that's really important to stress for people at home is Meditation, breath work, journaling, and all these different things, which are a great way to go ahead and um, manage stress, reduce stress, and also just generally try and feel a bit more of a sense of purpose and feel better about the day. Control, you don't, a bit of control. Over control. Your day. Yeah. You don't need to have a half an hour because a lot of people, the reason why they won't do something is go, oh, I don't, I'm in a rush. I've got to get the kids in the car. I've got to do this. Um, no, 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 no. Five, five minutes will do. Yeah. Five minutes is better than nothing. Absolutely. So if you've got the 10 or 15, brilliant. Bonus points to you. Well done. But if you don't, that's fine. Five minutes will be enough. Also, different, different horses for different courses. Some people, you know, it's so individual with what you need. Yeah. And so that, and that's exactly it as well. Like, so, but I found it really interesting when I researched into this a bit more. You can get the benefits from meditation from a couple of minutes. You can get the benefits of breath work from even just like one or two minutes. Yeah, wow. So 
I wanted to find what's called um, optimal effective dose, and I wanted to find. Seems to be the current through with you, the optimal <laughs> effective dose. Uh, but also based on time, realizing that if time's an important factor for everything, then what can I do in the least amount of time to get the most effective dose? And that be- kind of became my the obsession of my life, trying to go ahead and set all my little like daily practices up and stacking them together where possible. For example, the the I need to drive to the gym. So I'm going to be in the car for a few minutes either way. That's actually the optimal amount of time to have a cold pack over the boys. Yep. So stack that habit. Great. And while I'm in the car, I'm definitely doing some ridiculous breathing techniques as well. So, and what that basically looks like is a priming style breathing, which is kind of <laughs> like basically breathing in and out of your, your mouth and your nose, or effectively your nose as fast as you can, mm-hmm. which, um, which basically looks... Kind of ridiculous, That'd but be fantastic. Especially if you've got your banger on your and banger you're, you're breathing in and out, activating yourself, and someone drives up next to you, they're just like, "I'm leaving this dude alone." Otherwise, he's going to throw his ice pack that's on his nuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You, you look absolutely insane. But it's um, That'd it's really, really good. So you're doing that, then uh, oh, that's on the way there. So you're trying to stack all these little habits that you learn. And so everyone's got different things. And so the idea is, you don't need to do all this crap if you don't want to. Yeah. If all you take away from this is, I might chuck a bit of um cold water at the end of my shower. Brilliant. Like bonus points yeah, to you. Yeah, small steps. It's, it's about taking... So to put this like habit together of all these different morning routines, this is years and years and years of trying different stuff and seeing yeah. what works and seeing what sticks. Yep. So, and I don't beat myself up if I don't feel like writing my gratitude journal daily. Yeah. I don't... I do that from time to time. I do it very rarely, but I know some people who need to do it once or twice every single day. I just... I find it good, but I find the other stuff better and... T- yeah. yeah, my days are time sensitive, so I just well, do it's what works for me. Mate. It's clearly working. You're here forging ahead. What is the future for Savvy? Ooh, so uh, apart from being involved in the veteran games, which we massive, it? massive shout out and really appreciate. Oh, dude, thank you. I can't wait to be a part of that. No, um, so the future basically is we're doing a, a food based item, which will be next. Oh, yeah, and we're just trying the to go. Bar. Yeah, the bar. Yep. And we're, we're doing that in two separate flavors. I found it actually, we make all our decisions based on data. Yep. And so I found out recently. <laughs> 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 I think everyone so, on this podcast has picked that up by now. <laughs> so I found out that um, cookies and cream, which surprised me, is the number one flavor for bars. Mm. I don't know that. Would you have thought that? Wow. Uh, perhaps if we're sampling the American market, yeah. This is in Australia. Yeah, wow. No, I did not know that. So data from Coles okay. suggests the cookies and cream. Numero Uno flavor. Wow. Uh, for most bars sold per store per week. I would have thought chocolate. Um, well, ca- cookies and cream, if you think about it, it's kind of like it's, it's chocolatey biscuits with vanilla, right? Yeah, I guess so it's a kind of hybrid. Yeah, exactly. So it's a, it's a top deck. Um, I favorite chocolate of all time. 100%. Yeah, I'm okay. on that. There we go. So number two, though, throw a bit of spanner in the works for me. White chocolate raspberry. No. I like the muffins. <laughs> But he I does like muffins. <laughs> but I, I, White I chocolate raspberry. Yeah, see, for me, that I found that quite shocking. Uh, now, then three, uh, four, five, I can't remember off the top of my head, but because I, I found those two interesting, then you see different hybrids of different types of nuts and different things with yeah. caramels and all the rest of it. So the flavor- I don't think I've ever seen a white chocolate raspberry anything. Yeah, well, they're everywhere, apparently. Wow. So Blind. I... Um, well, yeah, because I, I, I found that quite shocking because I had no idea about doing that. The flavors that we've been trialing are double choc chip oh, yeah. brownie. Oh, boom. Um, delicious. Sold. And then crunchy peanut butter. Sold. Delicious. And then the other flavor we were trialing was a salted macadamia salted caramel. Is there a demographic of male and females within this? I'm wondering if more... So that's the other thing that's, yeah. that's skewing the data is because this is for health-related food bars, which are predominantly going to be protein bars. Yeah. So now that we're okay. opening up the market beyond a protein bar. You have to, to ask w- mum, mate. She loves a protein bar. She'll give you some market research. Yeah. Yeah, let's see what bar thinks. <laughs> careful, careful. <laughs> You'll get the download. <laughs> uh, but this, the good thing about this is um, it's a brand new market which hasn't existed before. No one's made a food item with benefits to your brain before. Yeah, and boy. so it's now all been body performance based. Exactly. Ah, geez. And so now it's not like someone thinking, oh, well, a protein bar, they're kind of for the guys and girls who go to the gym or need like sustenance. I don't need that. So I'm not going to have a protein bar. I'm going to have insert other food item. But now it's a snack, which is going to make your brain more effective. So it's a great thing to have at lunch. So now it's something that everyone can benefit from. 
So now it's kind of like, what the hell flavour do you go with? Mark Curry, ladies and gentlemen, heard it here first on the Heston Russell Voice of Veteran podcast, <laughs> taking over the world one <laughs> nootropic and aptogenetic product at a time. Very good choice of adaptogenetic. Yeah. yeah, look at you go. I remember. Yeah. Well, thanks, Savvy. But um, yeah, so that's going to be the, the, the next little thing that we're doing is, is that we're also... What's the timeline on that? So, um, well, I just... We're on the third round of sampling. I've asked them to discontinue the salted caramel hazelnut and replace it with cookies and cream. Good on you. Good choice. And just purely because um, yeah. there's a lot of peanut butter is always up there as a top flavor and the double chocolate chip brownie is always up there as a top flavor. And I think that will kind of work. Yeah. And then I just put the database one. I'm like, if apparently it's number one, it's presumably number one for some kind of Good a reason. Good choice. I mean, and it's one of those known things as well, you know? Yeah. And the... And the uh, Salted caramel macadamia was a bit of a dark horse. It, it was yeah. my favourite uh, of the three. But again, I'm not making the bar for me. I'm making careful. it for everyone. That's it. Yeah, I would be the person to make the bar for me and hence I would not be successful. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, yes, yeah, so that's the biggest kind of challenge is whenever you're looking at branding and starting like a whole business, all the stuff that you like, you've got to go ahead and just put in the bin. Yeah. yeah and you've got to remember, no, 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 no. What does the data say? What does everyone else like? And that's really hard because you can't not think about the stuff that you like. Yeah. But you're not doing stuff for you. You're doing stuff for everyone else. Oh, good on you. Um, All right. So it's coming up hot and fast. And what did you say that timeline was again? Uh, I'm hoping I'll have them out by spring or summer. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. And then other things we're doing is we're trying to... Oh, I probably don't know if I can talk about all these. Um, we have a bunch of little background items that are hopefully going to mean we get into a lot more locations. Okay. Um, we, can, we, can keep, we can keep people on their edge waiting out for that. I yeah. want to know, how can people get in contact with you? How can people learn when you're going to release these new savvy products? Well, I, I think uh, uh, a lot of the people are going to be at the Veteran Games, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, Veteran Games plus on here. And I mean, you've even set up a discount code that I'm going to put on my yes. personal website, HestonRussell.com. Yes, well, I just wanted to do that just because I figure A... Um, a lot of times when people try a new thing, they're always kind of apprehensive about, oh gosh, it's going to be good. Yep. So having a discount allows them to feel, okay, it's a bit cheaper than it normally would be. That's good. Yeah. Uh, number two is we offer a money-back guarantee. So if anyone who tries it and goes, oh, no, nah, I didn't like it, not for me, great. Just let me know. We're going to your money, no issues. Um, I know. Wow. So what's cool though, three and a bit years of trading, um, thousands and thousands and thousands, like uh, I have no idea actually, that like, I should have this number in my head and I don't. Tens of thousands of sales, Zero times have been asked for a oh refund. God. Now someone listening to this is going to be that first person. Yeah, actually, yeah, I'm just going to refund. Maybe I've just no. challenged people. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. But so uh, what only, you only, only use the guarantee if you actually don't like it. Yeah. If you do like it, uh, you know what? Don't be that guy or girl. You guys just do whatever yeah. you want to do. So um, what's your website? So we're on savvybeverage.com. There it is on the can. Savvy with two Vs. S A V V Y beverage.com.au. That's correct. Beautiful. And people put in a discount code Heston, they actually get a discount, don't they? They do. Wow. So the idea basically is I wanted to provide people with a big discount just so they can give it a red hot crack. Yeah. And they can try things that they like and that would be cool. If you're at the Veteran Games, I'll be there giving out a whole bunch of uh, drinks and bars if they're ready, but probably it'll just be drinks and coffee. And also uh, just being able to pick this man's brain. I mean, I've taken some amazing things away already and you're actually going to be there in person. Because you, you keep yeah. saying we. Who's the savvy team? I, I'm so used to referring to the team as like a, a group of people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, yeah it's effectively mainly me. Yeah. But there's, but there's, a, there's low, uh, that's not actually, that's not fair to say. Um, there's a whole lot of people who assist and, and have their own little pivotal part, but I'm the only like but full-time employee. I was going to say, em employees of Savvy is you. Yeah, yeah. Mate, you me. are a bloody success story if ever I've heard one. I love it. And you just have done it from the right place. Everything from what it goes into through to what actually goes into it and what your purpose is doing this, the mental health, physical health, emotional health, nootropics, ap aptogens. Mate, this is in some impressive stuff. I hope, I hope in your uh, gratitude journal you take some time to actually write down where you've been and how you've achieved this and <laughs> really take stock. No, it is, and especially yeah. in Australian market in committing everything you have into it. Well done. That's and also nice at the same time you. developing yourself. Well, yeah, so the, that's what I actually found probably the most enjoyable is... Uh, an enormous exploration into personal health to, and development at the same time I was creating something that was brand new. So I was technically creating two things that were new. The new version of me with the new version of a product that can change people's lives. Yeah, right. And so, and the person who I was was not the person I needed to be in order to achieve the outcome and success that I wanted. So I needed to greatly level up 
um, in order to be able to do what I wanted to do. And so a lot of people, I don't think, give themselves the opportunity to take stock of where they are and actually go, hang on, where am I at in my little um, web of life? And when I say web of life, I mean like if you went ahead and you can download one of these things um, online and work out, give yourself a score from zero to 10, be fully honest with yourself. How happy are you with your physical body? What about your mental health? What about your finance? What about your social circle? What about your family? What about your insert like other areas, right? There's normally like eight or 10 on this kind of like map. And the idea is it's a web and you kind of work out where you're at and then you kind of join all the dots together and it's rarely a perfect circle. It's normally like a real weird looking shape and you can work out right in front of you, crap, okay, cool. But then start to be real with yourself. Okay, cool, I gave myself a score on social of two because I'm always working and never seeing my mates. Yeah. But hang on, my finance is... Is a, is a one. So like if I spend more time with family, I'll have less time at work, which is going to affect finance. Yeah. That's a, so you, it, it's a good thing to kind of map out from time to time and work out where you're at. But if you can find out a way to kind of improve all of those things, yeah. which is such an achievable thing because everyone wastes so, so much time. When you start to go ahead and actually look at the way that you're spending your time day in, day out, it is alarming how... Just check your screen time. <laughs> yeah. Like we spend yeah. so much time just doing absolutely nothing and it's wasting time and you just don't need to. Yeah. And you tell yourself little things like, oh, but I need to have me me five or 10 minute um, time on social media when I go to the bathroom. Yeah. I need that. To, or, or I really need after a big hard day, I need to put on like two hours or three hours of TV and crack a beer. Fucking no, you don't. <laughs> like... You absolutely do not. Ruthless. And it's it's just as such a, when you when you when you kind of flip that switch you realize oh my god I've extra time. Yeah. A friend of mine actually kind of challenged me um, a few weeks back when w- it was a Saturday. He goes, "What are you doing tomorrow?" And I go, "Oh, Sunday. I'll probably have a bit of a, a sleep in, so probably get up at like I don't know eight or nine, whatever. I don't know. Bit of a snooze in, and just basically I like to take it a little bit slower. I'll I'll do all my regular stuff. I just kind of do it at a bit of a slower pace. It's the day just to kind of like slow down a bit. And he was like, "Why do you do that?" I was like, oh, just because, you know, um, Monday through Saturday, I'm just kind of kicking my ass in a gear. I kind of have a day off. Go, Why do you need that? Yeah. And it's kind of just going, Fuck, I don't know. Just, just Programming. Yeah, I guess just um, you need a chill day. And he goes, why? Are you at risk of burning out? I was like, no, not really. He goes, why don't why you do it slow then? Why don't you go ahead and just treat it like every other day? And I was like, okay. And then um, it just kind of like made me think, I do just have a preconceived notion that I need an ide- I need a day of rest to be able to work hard. Yeah. But do I really need a full day of rest? I guess as long as you're putting those parameters where you're doing what you obviously do and self-reflecting and checking in with yourself yeah. as opposed to thinking you need to do that to perform and achieve. I'm with you 100%. Yeah. I'm so the first person to say, like, listen to what you need, not what others need. Exactly. But, so, but, when, but sometimes what you think that you need is just a something you've picked up from society yeah. and this you don't know what you don't know exactly yeah. and so for example we have a two-day weekend here there's a lot of places around the world that do not they have a one-day weekend Ooh. and that one day they fit everything in all the housework the kids this that this that yeah how do they do that all one day and we're over here with a two-day weekend going it's not long enough well everyone over here saying we need a three-day weekend exactly yeah the four-day working week and so but there's other places in the world that are of just achieving all sorts of things. They're working six days a week and on that one day off, they're getting everything done, including their rest time. So therefore, do we need... Exactly, so you change that perspective and then... So that uh, next day that I had a um, chat with my mate, I then got up at four o'clock on the Sunday um, and just treated it like it was like any other day. Four o'clock on a Sunday. Which I know it's nuts to do. But I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and do it and just see how I feel. And then I felt great. felt normal. I felt like I didn't actually need to do the... Because th- in my head, I'm like, no, the Sunday's the day of rest. Because then you're rebooting yourself for the week. Yeah, okay. And I always kind of thought, I need that day off to allow my system is to have one day of just relaxing and leisure and just doing nothing and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, but do I need that really? Well, the whole thing is you're taking yourself down and up for because you just think you need to as opposed to... Yeah, self-regulating. Like, but, but people think that they need to have that two or three hours of TV every night with that beer to yeah. unwind. It's like, you don't. And so the thing is, once you kind of change that idea of kind of going, why do I have the views that I currently have in my head? And how am I spe- and why am I spending the time in the way that I am spending it on? What do I think I'm trying to achieve? And then you go ahead and you take away a lot of the bullshit and realize, hang on, I don't need to do what I'm doing. I'm choosing to spend this in a really crappy way. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm unhappy with where I am in life. And I wish I had more time to do insert 
things you want to do, uh, more time in the gym, talking to your parents um, and your family more, talking to your friends more, being there as a better partner, yeah. um, spending more time in self-reflection and improving as a, an emotional, um, well-rounded person, whatever it might be. But then you feel, I don't have the time. It's like, well, you do. Just, just find just that make time. It. Yeah. Exactly. And when you start to go ahead and you look for these little micro moments to get better and better and better and better and better, then you'll find that they're always there. Yeah, wow. And it's it's just about trying to find a way to uh, constantly just I don't know. It's if, if you're if you're intrigued, and some people don't care about this stuff as well. Like, yeah, that's another thing. That's and that's okay. Whatever makes you happy. It is. It's totally yeah. Because I'll tell some of my comparison. mates. Not comparison. Yeah, yeah. So like sometimes um I'll get these kind of conversations when I'm out with my mates, and so and I might get like with a few friends who are really interested in trying to like um get more done, get more done, and a few of my other mates might be kind of eavesdropping, and I'll kind of yeah. do, like just even go, oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and um, and no, uh, like you you are definitely a unique individual. You've definitely uh, done the work, and it's paying the dividends. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of people listening to this. Mate, I'm tired listening to you and impressed by like it's <laughs> it's uh it's intimidating the level of performance. How old are you? Uh thirty four. There you go. Bam. Not but a, it's not even no, at the see, halfway point. No, see, it's not. Um, I, I wouldn't say it should be. Um, I still don't think that I'm doing. All that much compared to others. There are others that are going so, so doing so, so much more. Again, the whole thing, and the biggest part for so many of us is breaking that comparison cycle. Yeah, exactly. And and not beating yourself up if you're not doing it. But yeah. I think if that's just something that... As long as you're achieving your potential. And if you haven't pushed it to that potential and realised where that potential is, then that's where I think people need to put in that work. But I think even myself in my own little crash recently, bringing it back to, like, what do I actually need to make me happy. Doing that butcher's papers activity, look at doing that web activity you were talking about and finding out how you can optimise your performance physically, mentally and emotionally to achieve that. I think that needs to be the massive takeaways I want people to come from this discussion with you. Um, and that there's so much out there that you can self-teach yourself coming from being you know, a white-collar bloody apex predator lawyer through to <laughs> now being the, uh, what is it? The, um, the new tropics dealer. The new tropics dealer. Yeah, that's good to go. I think a, a huge one as well is just uh, gratitude. I was yeah. a self entitled little snot um, yeah, during right. all my lawyer style, style days, and it wasn't. I wasn't like a bad person or anything. It's just I didn't take the moment to go ahead and stop and think. Some days, I am so lucky just yeah, to be able to, right. to do what um, things are like at the moment. And so I think that becomes almost a secret to um, success and secret to happiness in one way. Absolutely. Is just trying to be more and more grateful for things that are going on in your life and paying attention because the more that you focus on things to be grateful for yeah. is the more that you're noticing good things in the world and the more happy that you are. And then when you see that there's good things that you can be happy for and you see that you're enjoying things which makes your life so much better, then you want to go ahead and provide more to the world so there's more of yeah. this to go around and that energy you're putting out then especially for someone like you who's creating something that other people are ingesting and going into their lives i think having that grateful positive energy in your work is something that's absolutely essential it's it's like the butterfly effect or, yeah. or like the ripple effect and that's yep. what i i really love the most is i try and have way more positive connections now than i do um negative so in a time yeah. whenever i'm tempted to go ahead and get angry at someone I try and adopt what's called like a Marxism perspective, which is a particular philosophy. Um, anyway, we won't get into it. Um, it's just trying to uh, think about things, in a, you know, reframe everything to be much happier and nicer. So if okay. someone does something that's like really, really uncool, instead of like reacting, getting angry about it, I'll go ahead and just be like, I'm sure they had a reason to, to act that way. Like that's not really appropriate. Good but on you. That, but but that, if I react, it's yeah. just going to make things way, way worse. That's true. So instead I'll just take a moment and just be like, I've been in those shoes before. I mean, that's pretty amazing situational awareness. That's something I constantly struggle with at the moment. I'm it's, the one, it's I'm not the one easy. who wants to fight, fight, fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, that's, and that's so, so normal. Like, um, but it's well, just... Well, it's just projecting your own issues, to be honest. <laughs> it is, but it's also realising that it's sometimes like a, it is stronger to be like kind of the, the bigger yeah. person in a thing. So it might be the littlest thing in the world. It might be you're in a busy bar in insert random city that you're in and some uh, bloke goes to bump you to go ahead and like get in front of the line ahead of you. And you go ahead and like size them up and go, oh, mate, fuck off. And you could... Or you could just go ahead and just be like, whatever, sweet. Maybe it comes down to 30 what you're, seconds, you're who cares? putting those nootropics and aptogens into you as opposed to those stimulants that make us more wired up to fight as well. Well, that's the other thing is just when you're kind of happier and in a more pleasant um, place and you're more comfortable in the skin that you're in and yeah. whether it's due to uh, nutrition and dietary supplementation, whether it's through to good sleep, whether it's through to 
uh, exercise and hormetic stresses such as heat exposure, cold exposure, fasting and exercise, or whether it's the last piece of the puzzle, which Positive is... Positive relationships. Exactly. Yeah. Your interpersonal and extrapersonal and also your management of stress. Yeah. Those are the four kind of key pillars of mental health. And when you're working on all of those little bits and bobs... Together. Um, and, that's, and that's the amazing thing is a lot of people never take the time to go, hang on, what makes my brain work well? What's going to make me think well? What's going to make me feel the best I can what's going to make me a better person for not just me but for those around me yeah. and if I really care about those around me I'd care about getting better so I can be better for everyone around me and that's the kind of way that I like to use extrinsic and intrinsic motivation because intrinsic motivation is really strong when it's you wanting to do a thing yeah. but social experiments have proven that people will react more powerfully to things when they know it's going to provide other people benefits than themselves and, yeah. Yeah. and so if you can basically link your personal development, you becoming a better, happier, stronger person to the improvement of other people's lives, then it makes you want to do it twice as much. Mate, that is so brilliant. And I am going to use that as a last closing caption. What I've loved so much about this conversation with you is there's so many amazing nuggets in there. And as, <laughs> as opposed to it being very clinical, by the numbers, by the book, sub point, sub point, sub point, you've really integrated it so well into your own personal journey, what you do personally, so therefore it has its that personal efficacy, <laughs> right the way through to how people can literally go out there and grab it and buy it. So I'm going to say that again, savvybeverage.com.au, S-A-V-V-Y, beverage.com.au, that's where you can go and get your hands on some of this amazing natural brain booster, which is now in my fridge, which is going to be at the Veteran Games. Mark Curry, have you got your own personal website or anything? Um, I, I oh, don't, I copper joins us for the last <laughs> minute of the podcast. Hello, little munchkin. I, I should. So there's, um, there's a, another product I make, um, in collaboration with a uh, mental health expert called, uh, Mitch Wallace. And so we made a product called Calm Water and he's been telling me now for like two years, get your own personal website. And I, yeah. I don't yet. So I know well, you look, have yours. No, it's not. I mean, you're poured into what you're doing. I mean, I'm sure if people contact Savvy, they can get in contact with you since you're the man oh, at the other you. end. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's do that. There's no point, you know, duplicating things. A single point of access will go from there. And they can, what are you going to do when you invent a bar and your website's called Savvy Beverage? Yes, I've, I've recently been thinking about yes, this. Yes, love that. And so, and also when I had coffee as well, I was like, I guess it's kind of a beverage. It's That's okay. Beverage, yeah. But yeah, when I did the food, I'm like, oh God, what do I do? Ah, uh, stick with it. You're good. Savvybeverage.com.au. I, th I think I'll just keep it the same. Yeah, do it. Yeah. So get in contact with Mark on there. You can go to savvybeverage.com.au. Use the discount code HESTON, H-E-S-T-O-N, to actually get yourself a discount because this legend has hooked those up listening to the Heston mm. Russell podcast. If you're not watching this podcast on YouTube, head to youtube.com slash Heston Russell to watch this amazing interview with Mark, myself, and his pink socks. <laughs> and, um, mate, we're going to look forward to getting in contact with you more, working with you, having you at the Veteran Games. You are an impressive dude, and thank you so much for joining us on the Heston Russell Voice of Veteran podcast. Mate, very kind of you to say, and thank you so much. It was a pleasure being here. My pleasure. Peace out. Dude, thank you. That was so, that was good. so good. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, right? Man, you got I think that was the most like, fun like, podcast I've done. I was actually at one stage in my head going, this has gone for quite a while, but I'm really enjoying oh, it, so we'll keep talking. Come on. Come here. And Copper joins us in the last moment. How did your walk go? How did your walk go? Huh? I can tell. Is that tap water? My dog drinks salt of water. I'll put one of those socialites in there. Don't feed the dog salt water.